All right, I'd like to call the September 19th, 2018 meeting of the Downtown Development Authority to order. For you. At this point, I'd like to open up public comment for anybody who might be here for public comment. If you're here, please raise your hand and be recognized. Tennessee. And Carol Hennessy, 258 East 12 My Road, Royal Oak. Um, I just wanted to thank the DDA for um, protecting the monument and going out there and trying to take care of it for us. And I know you still have some work to do on it, but I appreciate that and getting the water turned back on. Um, it looks pretty dry out there, but um, I know the weather hasn't been very good um, for the plants this year. But anyway, um, thank you, and if there's anything I can help you with to coordinate stuff, I'd be happy to um, be part of it. And then one other thing I'd just like to bring up, um, this Connect Royal Oak, um, I'm kind of got mixed emotions about it because there's not enough plans that are set already. Um, we don't know where the bus stops are going to be. Um, and I understand these buses are going to be small, like 13 for one bus and 30 for another. And I'm concerned about school kids being on a bus with adults. Um, to me, that doesn't mix. Um, I'd be if I had kids, I wouldn't be putting them on the bus right now. So um, I just wanted to say that and for you guys to keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay. Just to be clear, the water is not back on. We're stealing the water from the library. Oh. That's a well, it's getting more watered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Seeing none, I'll close public comment and we'll move on to number three. Approval of the meeting minutes from August 15, 2018. I know all of you have looked them over. Move to approve. Move to approve by, Commissioner, by Director Riley. I'll second. Second by Director Safai. Do we have any discussion? Signal, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Number four, we got our expense items for the month. I believe <coughs> these are all informational, aren't they, Tim? So if you have any questions about anything that has had a check written this month, now is your time. Well, one, well, just one quick one on the Kerr Russell. Is that is that it? Or was, or was that because I remember there was that little one that came in after the fact? Yeah, that's the one that you actually approved. Okay. Yeah, this okay. is just the one you approved at the prior month. Okay. All right. Got it. Anybody else? Is there anything? Okay. Okay. All right. Move on to item number five. We have a transit presentation from Ray Donegan and David Woodward. Oh my God, my phone decided to ring. Okay. So in all my years, I've never spoken from the DDA before. This is great. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and have we? So uh, I was told I have like. 10 minutes, so I'm going to make it as quick as possible, although you know I could probably talk for an hour. Um, but I'm here with Dave Woodward tonight to talk about the Royal Oak Public Transit Plan and the 1.25 mills that will be appearing on this November ballot and to tell you what that's all about. So as you know, the city of Royal Oak has been working on mobility improvements for some time and obviously on parking improvements. And we know the Royal Oak voters have always supported improvements to public transit, the RTA plan, uh, the current smart millage. And so we wanted to take a look at public transportation to see how, if it does serve Royal Oak and how it serves Royal Oak, if we could find ways to make improvements and if we could find a way to pay for it. So we know that our current bus system, SMART, is a, is a regional 
public transportation system that's designed really to go long distances to get people to work, primarily on weekdays. There is some weekend service like the fast bus on Woodward. For the most part, it is a commuter service, regional service to take people to work. We also know in Royal Oak that we have a lot of senior citizens that have disposable incomes that want to come downtown and spend money. And we also have people who can't don't and probably shouldn't drive, but our current curb to curb service for seniors is very, very limited in that it only operates six hours during the day, ends at 3.30 in the afternoon, doesn't operate at night, and doesn't operate on weekends. So the 10,000 seniors who are eligible to use the curb to curb service but want to come downtown for a drink or something like that, stage crafters go to dinner or shop at retail stores, cannot, can't get there after 3.30 in the afternoon or on the weekend. So the city commission appointed this citizen-led local transit task force, of which I was chair and Dave was on it too, so that we could examine our existing system and see what was going on and see what we could do. So we worked, we decided to, uh, and this was early in 2017, so we decided to work with the smart bus system because they have the technical and financial expertise that we don't. We don't have transit planner, the city doesn't have a transit planner. Um, and we really wanted to be able to have access to their resources. They have a lot of resources that we don't have, and we wanted to be able to leverage them as much as we could. So we put out a community survey, which I think you can flip to. It's the, yes, there you go. Community survey in March. Um, it, well, you can see it all on romy.gov backslash transit if you want to see the whole thing, but just some highlights. Whoops, and the, they're out of line, but people said that they would use public transportation if it was frequent, if it covered the entire city, and if it connected people to the region, they want to be connected to the fast bus. They discovered how great it is to get downtown to a game or something on the fast <coughs> bus, but they're trying to find tr you know, tricky ways to park. Where do they park to get to it? Um, and so they also said that they, or we asked them where they wanted to go, and obviously their top location they would take to get to on a bus is downtown Royal Oak by a large margin. They want to go to special events, arts, beats, and eats. They really want to go to the Detroit Zoo on a bus because they don't want to park. And they want to be able to go to farmer's market in something other than a single family car. We also asked about our for parents of high school and middle school kids, if you would put your child on a public transit bus, if it was safe and convenient, and 76% of the respondents said they would. So, and we also found out it was important for seniors to, or for people uh, to expand uh, transit for seniors. So we went to work with SMART and we put together some best practices. Tim, you can just move. We went to transit school, Transit 101, to learn what public transit is, really is and why, how it is successful. So we knew we wanted to expand the senior curb to curb service so it could operate days, nights, and weekends. We knew we wanted to find a way to make a safe and convenient way to get kids to school on smart service. And by the way, the smart bus system already takes middle school and high school kids to school on a public transit bus, not only here in Royal Oak, but they also do it in Berkeley and cities all over the state. We knew we wanted to generally increase mobility so everybody could get around Royal Oak without having to rely on a car. We wanted to provide, obviously, nights and weekend service, connect to the regional system, and we wanted the service to be frequent because we know from best practices that public transportation is successful if it's frequent. And frequency means the bus, the, the bus or the train or whatever it is needs to come every 15 to 30 minutes so people don't have to fuss with schedules and look at the thing and not know where it goes. They can just walk out in the main street and the bus will come. So bring down the next slide, I think, is the plan, plus you have it, I think, on your schedules. So this is the plan. What it does is um, create two new routes. You can see the orange route and the blue route, and then the green route, which is an existing smart route. So the orange route goes on crooks and places where transit has never been before, despite the number of apartment buildings and other people, the density that's along Crooks Road, uh, which also includes the high school is there, and the Royal Oak Senior Center is nearby. The blue route sort of goes around 11 Mile and um, around Campbell and down to pick people up. All the routes go to downtown Royal Oak. All of them go to Woodward in one way or another, whether at 11 Mile, 13 Mile, or down by the zoo or in front of LA Fitness. 
Um, we knew we wanted to, oh, and the expanded green route is an existing smart bus route. It's called the 430 bus. And it starts at Somerset and comes down to Royal Oak. Right now it ends at 11 mile. In the new plan, it will go all the way down to, you know, LA Fitness or Hollywood Mark, Holiday Market or somewhere around there. Um, and it would be expanded. Now it only operates during the day, no nights and weekends. So it would be expanded to include nights and weekend service, 15 to 30 minute frequencies. And the smart bus system is paying for one third of that system, of that route, because it goes through Clawson and Troy. And we didn't think the residents wanted to pay for bus service in Clawson and Troy. But if they're listening, we're happy to have you uh, join in. We wanted the bus lines to be within, as best as possible, a quarter mile of people's houses, because studies show that that's about as far as people will walk. Um, we wanted to, like I said, we're increasing, we're doubling the funding for the senior curb-to-curb -curb service uh, to expand it to nights and weekends. We're getting 14 new buses. They could be anywhere from 25 feet to 35 feet. Um, they could be electric buses, they could be, you know, there'll be green technology. Uh, the buses are being paid for entirely by the smart bus system, which is what we mean by leveraging their resources. They agreed to pay for the buses, so we're going to let them do that. Um, they'll have modern technology like, you know, onboard cameras and apps and ways to pay for the bus with your phone and all of that. We really were determined that this system was going to be real transportation. It wasn't going to be a shuttle, a jitney, a, you know, a, a cute trolley riding around downtown. And it was going to be real transportation in the city that was a viable option for people so they didn't have to rely on their single family car. So if you go to the next, these are just some of the connections. I'm just going to my water at the moment, right? Um, <laughs> These are some of the connections, of course, we would make. We tried to get to everywhere we possibly could, to the farmer's market, to grocery stores, the Detroit Zoo, to all of our parks, our hospitals, our schools. And now we have, obviously, a new hospital that I'll be able to get to. It's not about me at all, but I live off of Main Street, so I can walk right out there and go to my doctor right down here and then hang out in the new park. Um, so, we, and, it, and then it goes to the next slide, and these are the regional connections. Clearly, if you can connect to the fast bus without having to find a place to park, you can get to a ball game, you can get downtown into all those places that a lot of people don't go to because they simply don't know where to park when they get downtown. And it's not just downtown Detroit. People are a little leery here. I was up doing a presentation in Coventry Club, which is the very top up there on the orange route at Crooks and Meyer Drive. A lot of senior citizens, a lot of reti retired teachers. You know, I was doing a presentation there, and they all said, boy, there's a great stuff happening in downtown Royal Oak. But honestly, we're, just, we're a little leery about it, so we, we generally don't go. Although they do go to stagecrafters, and they would love to be able to go to dinner before and after. So. We know that people take public transportation for one of two reasons, and that's to make or spend money, both of which we want in our downtown. We want people to make money. Clearly, we're building buildings so people can make money, and we want people to spend money. We know a lot of people spend money on our bars and restaurants, but one of the things we don't think about is the service workers. It's in our conversations that we've had with bar owners and restaurant owners and coffee shop owners is a lot of their staff are taking expensive Uber and Lyft rides, $20 in cab rides after work because they, there's no other way to get home. A lot of bar and restaurant owners take their, uh, they drive their staff home. A lot of them fire people because they can't get to work and we know that firing and hiring people, you're all business owners so you all know that hiring and firing people cost money. So we'd like to do as much as we can to make sure you don't have to spend money. Or, well, unless you want to spend money on good things. So, the costs, here we are, costs. So who's going to pay for this? How are we going to pay for this? Do you want to talk about this, or I'll just keep going? <laughs> he doesn't want to say Stand in there. <laughs> I just bring him to look good, I guess. We'll get, to <laughs> we'll get to the rest. So, like I said, we worked with Smart Bus to, f 
to leverage these resources. We came up with, well, I'll tell you in our planning process, if you take this map, which is down here, and you say, I know how to design a transit system, and then you start drawing lines on it. That's what we all did. We drew lines saying, I know the solution. Well, we came up with $12 million solutions, $20 million solutions, solutions that have never been done anywhere in the entire country. But they went back, the smart bu bus people went back, and. Um, you know, analyzed them and put numbers on them and did all this stuff and then came back and said, no. So we came up with that system. <laughs> and it's a really very simple system, but working with them has its advantages, of course. They're paying for the 14 new buses, which they will pay to main which they will maintain. We pay for parts and they take care of the buses up at their facility at 15 and Crooks. I think it's 15 and Crooks. Um, we also have access then to what's called 30% of the local an annual operation will be uh, from local bus operating, which is state and federal funds, uh, which from our gas taxes that we already pay, and we're bringing that money back home to Royal Oak. We also have the smart funds, leveraging the smart funds for the 430 route and obviously for the buses, and then we'll have fares, and the fares will be compatible with the smart fares because we, since we're connecting to the smart bus system, we really want it to be seamless and convenient. So you don't want it to, one to be this cost and one to be another cost, so we will work very closely with them to make sure our fares are compatible. And then the rest of it is uh, the 1.25 mills, a five-year millage on the November ballot. So um, when it comes down to planning, I should go back, there's 107, 168 possible stop locations. It could be 140, it could be 160, it could be 100. Um, the stops are, will be determined after a lot of community input from stakeholders, our school district, the senior center, um, you know, is the stop better on this corner or that corner? All of those things will be worked out with a lot of community input over the next, you know, the first few months. Uh, there'll be 25 shelter locations like bus stop. There could be 25 bus shelters, which I thought seemed like a lot. They said those goes pretty quickly. But um, they'll be where there will be transfers and where people congregate. You don't put a bus shelter where there's one person. You put a bus shelter where there's 10 people or 20 people. And so those things will be worked out too. We'll be buying those shelters also through the smart bus system, which they purchased through the state. And so we'll have a variety of options that way. And I think that also leverages the money. Now, as far as downtown routes, I, routes, I've met with a lot of business owners, and they look at the map, and the, like the downtown portion of the map is just a bunch of lines going downtown, and they say, is it on 4th Street? Is it on 5th Street? Is it on 3rd Street? Is it on Washington? All are those stops, is that where they are? And all of that will be worked out with your community. You can have a big old meeting and decide where the bus stops will be. And of course, we will, I'm sure the system will um, look for or welcome advertising, you know, any of those kinds of things, both on the bus and in the shelters. Um, also, bus wrapping is a possibility. Uh, come to write impressions on a, bu you know, a bus, that kind of thing. So, um, or arts, beats, and needs, one of those. So, um, I think that's what I have. Dave, what did you want to add? So, See, uh, he's, he can't talk. I, <laughs> I've never been accused of not being no, able to talk. Sure. Um, but thank you. Thank you for creating time on the agenda. I mean, it's my um, kind of contribution to the end kind of comes with like, the ask and, and specifically one reason why we're before the DDA. I mean, obviously, the downtown area, Rays is one of the, the, the destinations that people would want to come, and we want to be able to do that. But as a DDA, you're also a tax capturing entity. And though as a result of this proposal were to pass, that the DDA will capture resources. And so kind of my ask to you, and, and I believe that the projection using uh, equalization numbers is a little north of $180,000 annually, to think about how to it, how, how do we grow and improve transit in this area? How do we bring shoppers and customers into the area? How do um, we, I mean, we look at the downtown in a way to be more transit oriented, to be able to help better get workers to jobs. Um, there are uh, programs around the country, Guaranteed Ride Home, um, partnering with rideshare companies. I actually think that there's a lot of creativity and opportunity that I think the DDA can be a leader on in being able to do this. And there will be resources that the DDA will capture should this proposal um, be approved. And um, really uh, encourage all of you to 
be open to thinking about that, whether it's a smaller group of people who kind of like think through like what are all the opportunities. Um, part of the proposal and recommendation that the, the, the city adopted was a creation of a standing committee to, to allow not only for the community um, input in terms of the full implementation of what this looks like, uh, but the ongoing operations and constant evaluation and, and definitely would be looking for uh, DDA represent, uh, representation on that. And then, I mean, lastly, I just kind of move forward. I mean, there's a lot of incredible things happening uh, in our community. Um, I serve, I'm the vice chair of our economic development committee at the county. And um, I mean, the group came in, they started talking, and then everyone wanted to get to the conversation about what's happening in Royal Oak. Um, and I think that there, there really is an opportunity. Um, how does this conversation help translate into broader regional transit in the future? How does, uh, how does uh, economic development and um, transit development actually intersect? And you guys are all on the front lines to help make that happen. And so um, kind of close off, I mean, Marie can, and speak this all in her sleep, um, but in terms of getting workers to jobs, getting shoppers to shops, um, creating the ability to connect to I mean, the broader region, I mean, this is a sound plan that leverages resources that frankly are gonna in large part go elsewhere, uh, and um, a tremendous amount of work figuring out like, how do we make, how, how do we produce real transit in this area that is scalable? Um, we're uh, very fortunate that a lot of our neighbors in the, in, the, uh, in the surrounding communities have been reaching out saying, what's going on? How, do we, how can we be part of this? And I really think that this is an opportunity to help move the conversation, like how do we um, improve transit in this area um, long term? And so I think we'll open up to any questions if people have it, but we want to make sure that you had all the details of like what the plan does. There's a host of information on the city's website already, uh, and we can open up to questions for. Who's here? I just, I just got two questions, real quick. Um, it's 1.25 mills for uh, per, per annum for five years, correct? Right, that's what the is question. the average cost per household per year? So, <coughs> excuse me. So on a 200,000. A uh, $200,000 value house with a $100,000 taxable value, you're looking at $125, about, I mean, $10 a month. $125 per annum on a $200,000 house with a $100,000 uh, $100, assessment. Okay. Correct. And second question is, um, assuming it passes, um, I was wondering about the, the, the routes and all that. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of work to do after that, determining the stops and all of that. Are we talking weeks, months, years? What are we talking? I, well, go ahead. Uh, since you talked the whole half <laughs> Now, um, so in terms of, uh, I mean, working with SMART, I mean, obviously the acquisition of the buses, you got to order them and get them. And so um, at least six months is going to be required to be able to get the equipment and everything. So I, I, I would say that that's the window of time to do like all the detailed planning. Um, so we're looking at kind of a July is an ambitious, but the target goal to be able to launch this in the coming. Uh, uh, in other words, by July, you have all the equipment, you have the routes planned and all that. And right, I, exactly. It's so not sounds like ambitious with like all the meetings right. you're talking about and all the input that you need, but. You, well, you need input, I mean, and, and the community input about figuring out like the, the individual details. Remember that um, this plan was designed to try to make sure that these routes are within a hundred, a quarter of a mile of I mean, individual homes. And so we're not talking like there's a this huge span of area. We're sure. talking principally intersections I mean, if you look, you probably, I mean, don't notice it because, frankly, the main uh, street bus route doesn't actually ride that frequently. But there actually are bus stops along that route when it, I mean, if, if you drive north, then you'll see it on, on there. And so the idea is to figure out what is, what is the optimal place. And so whether it's a sign, if it's a concrete pad, is it a... Um, is it a shelter, which, I mean, the shelters, like where shelters usually are at large major intersections. And when you think on going north and going south, I mean, 20, the 24 bus shelters are in the 125, uh, 1.25 million capital budget. That divides up pretty quickly when you figure out the amount of intersections in this thing, that, that's, that's where that's going to get. So, um, yes, community input's absolutely important because we, we want to make sure that these routes actually work in a way that makes sense and get people where they need to go. Um, so, and, and six months is an appropriate time to be able to do that. And I think, and I, when I, people ask me about the stop locations, and I think of, for instance, like the Boys and Girls Club is on Lincoln. Um, but I don't know, you know, I don't know where they, where the kids get off. I don't know where they get picked, you know, I don't know how that, 
operates. And so I, I don't think they want me to exactly decide exactly where that stop will go without having a meeting with them as to where that should go. So it's those kinds of meetings we have to have. And yeah, it's a lot of meetings, but it's a huge, big, important project. So I don't think, I think we look forward to that, whoever we is, I guess, but yeah. Okay. Anybody else with any questions, comments? No? Wow. Sure. I just think that studies show that communities that invest in public transport, transportation benefit shows it time and time again. Absolutely. Same with public art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And public art, public transportation. Our buses can be art. Yeah, it's win-win. <laughs> yeah, and I guess I mean, the other thing, I mean, what you guys think about like how the additional, like, the tax capture dollars the DDA captures is that I think that there are creative ways to start thinking about how does this partner with the senior curb-to-curb -curb transit that people who I mean, can't, I mean, can't drive, and, and right now is very a very limited service, that serves very limited hours. Um, like, how, how do we create the opportunity for more customers coming down here? And I, I can speak anecdotally about people who I know use it, who would love to use it to be part of everything that's happening in this area, and I think there's a real opportunity to have that conversation moving forward. Great, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, our next item is uh, number six, the facade grant application for 408 South Washington Avenue. Uh, Sean. So on June 13th, uh, the DDA received a facade grant application from 408 South Washington LLC. Um, the applicant is looking to uh, replace uh, portions of the facade, such as the upper cornice of wood, uh, and wants to replace... Um, top row of windows. Um, so this application went before the Infrastructure Committee and uh, the Infrastructure Committee recommended that the amount be awarded um, be consistent with the uh, facade grant guidelines which is 50% uh, of the costs of the project uh, with a cap of $10,000. And that exact amount would be reviewed by the Infrastructure Committee once all the receipts are turned in when the project is complete. Um, so attached to uh, this cover letter, I have included the application from the applicants as well as some of their estimates. And um, they turned in some subsequent estimates that went before the committee. Um, which totaled the project of $18,320. Um, if this estimate holds true to the end of the project, then um, the, D the DDA can expect to reimburse the applicant up to $9,160 for facade improvements. And the Infrastructure Committee did meet on this and uh, voted unanimously, unanimously to uh, recommend this to the full board. Uh, Director Sapaya. Uh, chairs that committee and Director Krieger, Director Bagley, and myself sit on that committee. And so, if there's any questions or anything for Sean, now would be the time. But I think this has been vetted over a course of two couple or three meetings. A couple meetings. Yep. So, I don't know if anybody has any questions or a motion or whatever. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve as uh, written. Uh, moved by Director Krieger. Second. Second by Director Bagley. Uh, any discussion or questions? No, I'll just say that <clears throat> this came to a few meetings. We did vet it. And, you know, to me, you know, they're repairing a cornice that's uh, in very poor condition. They're going to take it back to, to the way it was originally, at least apparently it was originally. And then they're also re repairing all the windows in the same fashion. So I think it's a good, good thing to uh, help them out with. And I think that's why we have the facade program for things like that. So I'm um, in support. I don't know if the petitioner is here. I don't think so. Yeah. I think we're going to end up with anybody else. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. All right. Next item uh, request for TIF assistance for 220 South Main Street. Uh, very similar, the uh, Business Marketing Committee met with the owner um, based on a request for assistance. Uh, uh, and the owner's plans to renovate what is uh, Bright Ideas building. Uh, you'll see the uh, request is an attachment to the report. 
uh, in terms of the uh, uh, items that the uh, committee discussed. Uh, the committee is recommending that the uh, staff be directed to prepare a reimbursement agreement to cover uh, basically items A through uh, F uh, in regards to uh, the pro proposed improvements. Uh, and the owner of the property is here. Uh, I can give you a little overview of his project. Sure. Hey, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dilley? Uh, my name is Dave Dilley. I'm one of the owners of Bright Ideas um, and also our property. Uh, some of you I know, some of you I have never met. So um, I'm going to just give a little background. I'm not really going to give a sales speech more than just a little background for what you there's, there's always some rumors that someone may have heard. But um, but my father-in-law, Jim Smith, many of you may have known Jim and my mother-in-law. Uh, unfortunately, my mother-in-law passed away two years ago. Jim passed away 15 years ago. Uh, came to Royal Oak in 1985 um, and purchased the Bright Ideas building. Put a lot of money into it then. Um, did the big renovation of about a million dollars in 1999 and 2000. That's uh, so what it is today. Um, and Jennifer and I have decided to move our business to the old Haberman uh, building, which we are spending another about a million and a half on that. Um, so now we can spend a million and a half here so we can bring tenants in. Um, but we basically have three buildings in Royal Oak. So Royal Oak is um, part of our home. We live in Royal Oak. Um, so it's an important thing for us. Um, probably most of you don't know me because we don't typically ask for things. We don't typically come forward and raise hell. Um, we don't ask a lot of questions. We try to live our life and pay our bills and provide good business for people. Um, so that's uh, our goal here. Uh, so one of the things, and I know with the, uh, you just had the one for the exterior facade, um, we'll probably do that in a separate um, proposal. Uh, and. I know you see the exterior of the building. I, do you have that up, or is it in here? The, uh, I don't remember if it is or it isn't. Yeah. So, so that's the, the new exterior that we're looking at from the current. Um, so just our exterior facade and all new windows that are 20 years old, um, you know, we're spending about $200,000. We'll be asking them for 10, which is you know, only 5% of that actual project. Um, the big thing, our building was built in the 20s, and... Uh, we have original bathrooms in a lot of places that are not ADA. We don't have an elevator. Uh, so obviously that's going to be a concern with new tenants. Um, and then also um, the fire staircases don't meet code. So there's a, we estimate about two hundred dollars to $250,000 just in infrastructure for ADA uh, type things. Um, I know probably many business owners don't like the ADA stuff. Uh, my daughter's in a wheelchair, and I do like ADA stuff because I live it every day. Um, and it's my, it's difficult some days for me to get into places. So I was not planning on this happening. <laughs> um, um, but a lot of our ideas and a lot of things that we're doing are because of um, us being able to move. Now we're on one floor at, at the Haberman building which will help us for furniture, will help our customers. It's good that we'll be on one floor. And now it's allowing us to make this building um, an ADA-compliant building um, for everyone to get in and out. And we think it's going to help the city and the people in the city. Um, we, have, uh, we don't have current tenants that are there uh, that are coming in. Uh, we have people we've been talking with. We don't have anything set in stone. We don't have any leases out yet, but uh, we have some interested parties for pieces of it. Um, I did notice in there you had something about no restaurants or it would go away, which um, right now our plan is we don't really want a restaurant there. Sorry, Mike, but um, we don't really want a restaurant in the building. We're, we're hoping more for other types of retail and offices, and that's, what, that's kind of most of what we are seeing for our traffic. We've had a couple of restaurants, but uh, we haven't had as much interest in that. Um, so again, our ask is really for just the DDA portion. Um, I don't know if Tim ran the numbers we had talked about it, or like it based. And again, it's based on what our building is going to get incrementally 
increased. And I know in our meeting we had last week, you know, Matt brought up the point, ideally you would like nothing from the DDA. Right. And I agreed with him. We would like that our building does not appreciate <laughs> when they assess it. Our taxes don't go up. That would be the ideal situation. We know they're going to go up and probably go up, you know, potentially double um, uh, what we're currently paying. Um, but this, uh, again, this we think the ADA portion is an important feature. So, um, I don't know. Relics come a long way. I was going to tell my story about my father-in-law, Jim Smith, real quick, is that I know. He said when he bought his building, they came to see Incognito in 1984. And when he walked across the street, he always tells me a, a tumbleweed hit him in the leg. And that's when he knew that this is where we, he should come because there's nothing going on here right now and we need to make it someplace great. And, um, and I think Royal Oak, you know, is, is that place and hope to keep continuing. So otherwise, I don't have anything else. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Dilley here? No, listen, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Dr. Riley. Um, I'll just address it from the um, committee standpoint. Um, you know, we met with uh, Mr. Dilly, and like like he said, the the way the way this is structured, it's all on incremental uh, taxable value. In other words, he's got his existing building, which we've all seen. Tax level taxable value is four hundred twenty-one thousand two hundred eighty. So he's paying those taxes. The DDA we're capturing, you know, our share of, of those. Well, after he redoes his building, okay. Um, one thing that first thing that we figured out is like okay it, it, in the past pretty much most almost all of the times that we ever invoke TIF it is for some public component of the building usually it's parking or something like that but it's a public component so we wrestled with how to do that the ADA portion came up the new you know probably need an elevator um, to make it compatible and I'll have to redo the bathrooms <clears throat> so again setting it on the incremental value as I said to Mr. Dilly your hopes are that you know, that you never pay, a, that, that, that we never pay you a dime, and our hopes are that we pay him the max, okay? In other words, that the value goes up that much that we're able to pay him the max for, whether, whether it's 200000 or less of whatever the ADA components are, but the taxable value has gone up that much, and we capture that ad infinitum. So that's, that, that's, that's what we meant by that. And the fact is, and... Um, I'll just, I'll just add some, some points here. In terms of the timing aspect of it, first of all, the whole building is 20,000 square feet. Uh, they're moving to Haberman in January 2019. They're expecting to get their plans from the architect approximately November. They'll probably start the demoing uh, almost as soon as they leave. Um, and with any luck, um, their goal, and I'm sorry, sorry if I'm yeah. stepping out of bounds, is to have tenants in place approximately 10 to 12 months down the road. Pretty aggressive, but we're talking about not, you know, a whole new building here. We're talking about just rehabbing an existing building, getting it ready to go, and adding 20,000 square feet of office, which, if everybody read today's press release, it's now public, that the Boji building is going all, you know, all to Henry Ford. So in, in my book, that's 130,000 square feet of uh, office building that we had on the market that's now off the market. So... Still a lot of room for office. One of the things I didn't mention about parking was, um, uh, like right now we have six employees. I know when we go to office with this much, we'll probably have 50, 60, 70 employees in there. So like what we'll be using in the parking structure, we'll bring, you know, 20, 20 to 30 thousand dollars a year in parking revenue. <coughs> Over what we do today, because we have six of us with parking passes, so. Um, and, and you mentioned you mentioned that you uh, I can't remember if you, if you were talking to a, a prospective tenant, but you timed how long it took to get from the structure to your building, and that was how long. It was a, I got from my office to my car and out to the street in a minute and forty five seconds. And I told everyone, I said, I can't do that at Somerset, and I can't do that to my lawyer's office. Although I get to park in his, in Troy, I get to go park in a lot right there. Um, I cannot get to his office in less than two minutes. So, um, you know, it, it's part of the reason if you look at where we made our, our uh, entrance to with the elevators as close as possible to the Center Street parking deck. Um, so, you know, the, the amount of time outside I think is 20 seconds or something, which again helps us for ADA. Um, and, and we have had wheelchair tenants in our other building. Um, 
you know, and, and it's been <coughs> difficult not being that close to an elevator from the structure. So. Sure. I have one question. Sure, Mr. Brown. Yeah. It got jumbled up in the, in the sure. conversation. You said you have, I know you don't have any leases signed, Correct. but you have interest in the building. Correct. But now I'm hearing it's 200. Call me in a minute. Thousand square feet of office space. Twenty thousand. Mr. Dilley, no, twenty thousand. Yeah, come back up. Otherwise, yeah. we're the only ones that. Yeah, that's okay. Are you? Is the plan to turn the entire building into office, or you can have retail on the first floor? It could be either. We've had tenants right now, so we have twenty thousand square feet. About sixteen of it's usable. Uh, we have uh, right now. We have three tenants that want um, that want the whole building for office. Uh, we have another tenant that wants retail on for a small portion of the first floor with office on the second floor. Um, we've had a lot of interest for obviously office on the second floor. Um, and then we have a basement level, which, you know, which I think our basement level, you know, part of this is it costs us quite a bit to do that. And obviously our rent in the basement is not ideal, but it also brings, I think, a good component. Like we have a ba basement space and our other space on Main Street. And, um, you know, we're able to, we, we have a company that, uh, so we're under the Starbucks building. Uh, they help for rehabilitation for people who have been in car accidents, so like neurological disorders. So again, they have a lot of handicapped people coming in and out. Um, they've talked to us about expanding potentially to this building, going to the basement because it hits their price point that they can be at. Um, and yet, um, you know, and now with the elevator being able to do that. So, um, okay. so I don't know if that answered. But we think, we do not think we're going to, we think that we will have probably 80% of this as a office component. And, you know, I mean, maybe the first level retail, but we, we think, we think we're probably going to have what, uh, about 2,000 of the 16,000 or maybe 3,000 of the 16,000 might be, um, a portion of the might be retail. Okay. Um, but we think it's going to be something like a bank or a store or a, you know, something like that, not a food service. Uh, Director Krieger, did you have something? Uh, no, um, I'm fine. Yeah. And, and I think, sir, real quick, I mentioned this to Mike. I said I, our building, the way it's set up, we think the cost to actually turn it into a restaurant and the, the way it sits and is broken up, it would be very, it, we think it would be difficult to become a restaurant. And we also think there's enough restaurant space currently in town and available, so. But probably not enough office. Okay. Anybody else with any questions? Depends on what it's assessed. Any questions? Oh, Mr. Jones. I've got a question for the committee. Sure. Uh, this one, you're so, the committee is recommending a 100% increment. We haven't done more than 80 in quite some time. I, I kind of thought it was a de facto policy that we wouldn't go above 80. Uh, when did that come up at the committee level? Well, in, 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 in this case, we did discuss it, the difference between like 80, 20, or 100 on this one. And the, the, well, the way, here was, here was why. Normally, and I'm trying to think if I should say this, but I'm going to say it. Um, stuff like this typically would fall under the infrastructure committee. Okay, like almost like the facade program where it's basically submit your invoices to us and we'll write you the check. Similar to what we just approved for $10,000. So under that, under, because of that, and we were doing it over a number of years based on the incremental taxable value, we decided on 100%. It really doesn't answer the question. <laughs> well, that's the best I got. <laughs> I mean, that's if you recall back when we were to addressing this, the facade to me, program. To me, this is a significant change in policy. Dave, what are your taxes right now? Like what do roughly? we pay a year? Yeah. Uh, Jennifer pays that one because I don't man. <laughs> good, good I, man. I don't know what's, I don't know. Uh, and, and, and if I can, I think some of the committee discussion was in regards to what would be the incremental increase and without knowing that, uh, uh, and they thought if given 100%, uh, it would get paid back quicker and would, wouldn't be, on, wouldn't be in, in, in a role of doing reimbursement for several years. Um, 
it's possible, and I did include the, the assessment sheet on the back uh, where you can see that the 421 is the current base year, um, but the current assessed value is a little more than twice that. Um, so if it comes, comes in a jump up with the renovation, uh, I think some of the committee thought was, well, we could get 20% for two years and then, or we could pay it off quicker and be done. Is there like an idea or a sense for how many years it would be? I just, um, you know. Well, the probably the Imagine Theater 300,000 was the last one that was 100%. Um, and that took, because it was not quite all done at one time, took three years. Three years. For 300 grand, a little, a little over three, three and a half years. But, um, there, were, but there was more because, was that building value, valued more or? Well, that was a brand new building brand on new dirt, part. so yeah, the, the the jump it hit there was, and this one's quite not. a bit. Yeah, so so this might be seven or eight years or something. Uh, like that, it right? could be less if it's only. I mean, it, the cap is two hundred thousand, but if the actual expenses come back at something under that, it could be two or three years. It could be. I see. So, I see. I see. I think it was the unknown and not the, uh, but each project's been slightly different. Um, the hotel was an 80-20 split. Um, the Edkin property you didn't give any assistance to. The Singh property you didn't give any assistance to. Um, so. this is, the, is this the first time we've ever, the, the DDA has ever handled uh, something like this on an incremental? It's as far as... Uh, incremental tax over. Oh, you, you've done the hotel as soon as it gets done, you'll have reimbursement there. So, no, like no, but said, no, the, the no what Jay means is that, that this is an existing building that's got an existing value in the building. We're talking about that's the what I'm talking about. No, I mean, you can go back to the you can go back as far as the Washington Square building renovation and just guaranteeing the rent on that building. Um, you, you've set up projects and deals based on projects and deals. Nothing, nothing sets a precedent for going yeah. forward the way you've structured prior activities. Right. I mean, I, I sit on this committee, however, I'm unable to make it to the last meeting, but I, I, I like I like how this is structured. I think it's, it's structured very well. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily think this is setting a new precedence or changing policy. I think that it seems to me like, like the committee felt that it was a faster way to just kind of get through the, through the deal, right? Is that well, and, and again, and again, going back to um, not, not the current structure of the facade program, but there was one carnation of it where it came up and we were looking at doing stuff like this within that program to, to assist people in build-outs, so to speak. And it was going to be, it was, it was going to be an upfront grant, if you will. And so that's, that, that, that went into our thinking as well. And this is a little different, it's a little different than anything we dealt with. And yeah, is your building sprinkled? Yeah. I mean, we'll have to obviously alter. But yeah, it, of it course. Is it is yeah. currently sprinkled. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we did that in okay. 2000. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to keep it moving. I'm going to make a motion to approve uh, <coughs> the motion. Or not the motion, the resolution. Resolution, resolution yeah. as written. All right, I mean, a motion the, by Director Krieger. Right. Do I hear it? Second. Second by Director Badgill. The, the, thing, the thing I like about it is that we're taking a building that does not have you know some things that you need let's say going outside of the ada thing an elevator you know we're, we're, we're creating a building that i think is more marketable i think right. gives the owner the ability to raise their rents and go out after more people so i think ultimately it's going to come back to us um, i think mr johnson brought up a good concern but i'm going to trust that the committee did their homework and all this and thought through it but ultimately i like I like the plan, and I think I think we should help them do this. That's why I'm making the motion. Does anybody else have anything for Mr. Dilly? Not right now. Okay, now you can sit down again. I actually have to take my son to soccer, so. That's okay. <laughs> if you don't need me, I'm headed out. All right, good okay. luck. Th thank you, everyone. Thank you. Dr. Johnson. I like the plan, too, but I don't see a reason why we should be changing uh, our policy, so I'm going to move to amend the motion. Uh, to make it an 80% reimbursement. Uh, well, let's, Director Krieger. 
No, it's not a. It's a mo motion to amend. It's motion to amend. Doesn't go back to Director. Okay, Krieger. that's right. Okay. It needs a second, and we vote on the amendment. Do I hear a second on Director Johnson's motion? The motion dies. Okay. Lack of support. Okay. It's in the record. Okay. With that, do we have any more discussion on this issue? Director Spy. Uh, I'll just chime in here. I I I'm a little torn on this. Um, I, I was leaning towards when Mr. Johnson first brought this up. I was leaning towards going in that direction. Uh, on this and um, staying with the policy. Um, but I do understand the argument about um, the way Mr. Twain explained it here and how we can, uh, depending on how this all plays out with the taxes and everything else, this would be, it looks to me like this is going to be a very short period of time. I think if this had been... Um, a larger dollar amount, um, then yes, I would have 100% been in support of <coughs> changing this back to an 80 20 type policy. I, I appreciate that, but we've already settled that yeah. part of it. So, yeah. and um, I intend to support the main motion now. I'm sorry. I will be supporting the, the, okay. the main motion. Um, and then, just secondary for the board, uh, Director Riley and Director Krieger uh, can verify this. This is something that we've discussed at length at the infrastructure committee and tried to decide which direction we needed to go with this. And I don't know if, uh, and I think we still need some more further discussion on this on the DDA is where this type of an application um, should land, whether it should land on business marketing or infrastructure and, and how, we should, how we should deal with these going, going forward in the future. Um, but I think this is, a good, this is a good project, this is a good use. Um, it's it's uh, something I, I I definitely can support. Anybody else? <coughs> Nobody. Seeing no other discussion, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. On a number eight, request for TIF assistance to 18 South Main. <coughs> Uh, this one's been in front of the DDA a couple times on request, so I, so I think the DDA board members are familiar with the vacant uh, property just north of, of the uh, Bright Ideas building. Um, the requesting party has asked for the DDA to uh, consider TIF assistance there. Uh, I won't run through the prior requests, but uh, uh, the committee did uh, uh, vote vote on it and provided a prior recommendation uh, to the DDA board uh, and then it was referred back to uh, the business marketing committee for further discussions. Uh, the committee did do that and has provided uh, a recommendation as well. I know the petitioner developer is, is here uh, and would like an opportunity to speak with you. Sure, absolutely. <coughs> Mr. Simchina or anybody else? Anybody else comes in? Thanks. Pass forward to it. I can put this up here without it falling off. And someone left a little laptop. I don't know what's done. Miss Dave's. Miss Dave's. I'm turning it in. All right. Full of secrets. Thank you. Um, I'm Charles Simchina. I was here before on this uh, representing Paso Teftis, the property owner. Also, Kathy Wilson is uh, the broker who would be attempting to uh, lease office space in this uh, site plan approved project. And I'm, uh, I want to appeal to uh, uh, the DDA to deviate from the recommendation you received from the committee. Uh, three committee members were there. You got an eight member board here now, and everyone didn't get to hear what we were saying when we were at the committee. But uh, to start out with, I'd like you to know that uh, with this recommendation, this project will not go forward. It will not build. Um, for this project to go forward, our request needs to be adopted by the DDA and approved. And we briefly talked about uh, our proposal uh, when we were before the the board last time and then the matter was referred back to the committee. 
um, our proposal was to have a 75% uh, TIF reimbursement for 15 years and to have the uh, DDA board as the city's parking committee make a recommendation to the city commission to allow us to purchase 50 parking passes contractually um, like the other agreements have uh, with Etkin and, and with Boji. Um, we disagree vehemently with the recommendations from the committee, not only the first time, but the second time we visited the committee. Uh, the factual basis for those recommendations, we disagree with the policy decisions. Uh, there's one thing I want, want you to know that I do agree with, is I think that there are good motives by everyone on that committee and the DDA when dealing with us. Um, I think that it's an unfortunate situation we have with Tasso in particular, who suffers greatly from the negative consequences and collateral damage from some of the approvals for other projects in the city in the heart of the downtown. Um, so if I say you did this or you did that, I'm not talking about you, Gary. I'm talking about you know the collective you, the city, the city commission, the administration, the DDA, because the case that we made was based upon two major factors. You heard some of this before. One, the massive incentives that have been provided create an economic disincentive or a disadvantage when you're building another new building close by where a whole floor of that building is gonna be office space. The amount of money that we can charge for rent has to be more than someone who's heavily subsidized, whether it's by free land, TIF reimbursement, uh, or whatever, um, cash, you know, like, in, like what Boji received with five and a half million cash, someone has, else has the ability to charge rent that's lower and attract tenants because of that incentive. Now there's other factors that go into play when setting a rental rate. Tasso bought his property in primary reason was to have an owner-occupied property to move his Red Smoke restaurant some retail space on the ground floor, and to accommodate the general theme in the downtown, to put a floor of office above that for, and make it a two-story building in an area that demands more than a one-story building. Uh, two-story buildings and multi-story buildings are deemed desirable by the city in this core of the downtown. And so that's how this plan developed. At the beginning of this process, um, when Tasso acquired the property, we approached the city immediately. We had meetings with different officials from the city. We had a meeting in Don Johnson's office that had six or eight people in there, uh, the police department, the engineer, the building, chief building official, the planner, Tim Twing was there, the economic development director. Um, everyone was in there and we laid out the idea that we would like to demolish a building that was obsolete and ugly and had been vacant for a long time and build a two-story building. Uh, we were greeted with open arms. It was Everyone was very supportive with the idea. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's quick. Let's go. And, uh, and we started that process. Tasso's family had invested a lot of their savings in acquiring the land and traditionally they had self-financed most of their projects whether it's Red Smoke Barbecue, Astoria Bakery, uh, coffee shop in Greek Town. Um, as they started to get the bids coming in, they were more expensive, a little bit exceeding what, what the, uh, uh, the savings were, and the project went along while they were saving more money. Eventually, we transferred a liquor license. The city commission approved that unanimously. And last July, the site plan for this building was approved unanimously by the Planning Commission with compliments about the design and how nice that would fit into the downtown. The problem that Tasso has is he's uh, uniquely situated um, and horrifically devastated by the change in the economics that have happened from the time he started until now. Um, the incentives for the rent put him at a disadvantage, the incentives that you participated in in some of these projects. Um, but just as importantly, uh, attempting to rent office space 
without being able to provide parking is nearly impossible. We wish our neighbors at Bright Ideas good luck. I don't know what their plans are to park 60 or 70 uh, employees in those office spaces, but uh, they're in a different situation with an existing building, uh, are not faced with a decision on whether to go forward and build a brand new building that relies on pre-leasing office space to make it economically feasible. Tasso's not gonna be able to build this building unless this DDA as a whole uh, changes their decision-making process and, and doesn't follow the recommendation of their committee and allows us the opportunity th through TIF reimbursement in the future and giving us a strong recommendation to the city commission for 50 parking spaces, not just we don't object. If we go to city commission with we don't object, I don't, know, I don't think we'll get parking place passes. I think that my thoughts correspond Wing said just a few moments ago when analyzing some other projects and the applicant who was here right before us that these projects are all kind of considered separately and differently and that nothing sets precedent. I know the committee told us that there was some precedent or past practice that they based some of their decision on in denying our request and only partially granting some relief. I, I'm not sure what the precedent is, and, to, and I, I, I kind of know what it is now after the committee explained it to me, but I don't know what, if, if the rest of you, Gary or Lori, or if anyone else knows what the precedent really is, and if that should apply in this unique case, I think it shouldn't. I think that, that this situation is so unique and different, it should be treated just like Tim said, it's each project is treated differently and the remedies are created differently. There's only one remedy to have this project being built and that's to equalize the, the economic disadvantage that he's suffering to rent this office space out. We presented pro formas and economic analysis that Kathy put together. Uh, the committee didn't uh, necessarily disagree with that economic analysis. Uh, the way what I read the committee's decision was based on some precedent that that there needs to be more of a public uh, improvement here or something. I'm not sure what that precedent is. I would challenge anyone to show me where that is in writing, where anyone like Tasso could figure out what he's dealing with ahead of time, whether it's in a website, whether it's in any written document or attached to any application. Um, I searched for it and I asked for it. It's, it's some kind of secret precedent that are, is well known by you probably, but not by people who just came to town and are trying to build a project. The only precedent that I can see, and the only written document I could find I mentioned before, and that's your task force report. I haven't found anything else that outlines uh, what should be happening, happening with the new development and what the criteria would be this task force report would be inconsistent with your precedent that I was told about or the past practice because it encourages the TIF reimbursement for a project exactly like Tasso's. It doesn't say any of the restricting factors that the committee explained to us. It says this is the type of project that should have the TIF reimbursement and also incentives regarding parking. It's right in the written document. I think Gary, you were on the task force. Jay, you were on the task force. There were elected officials on the task force and other business people. But this is a document that's been referred to not just by the DDA, but more frequently by the city commission and the mayor. This is the only thing that guides anyone who is, that you can find in writing that outlines what your program is. Uh, we fit the program and always thought we fit the program and never imagined that we'd be in a situation where we couldn't buy parking passes for the office tenants for the new development. We never imagined that we'd be ineligible for TIF reimbursement, but in particular, other people have economic incentives that are competing with us to rent office space and can offer it cheaper. There's one thing that this DDA can do to equalize and create some equity here, and is to grant 
a TIF reimbursement, just as we requested, you would end up with 75% under the 80%, under the 100% for 15 years. We would build a two-story project. If we also get a good recommendation from you regarding the parking passes, and then the city commission allows us to contractually uh, have an ability to buy those parking passes in the future, and we can offer those to the tenants who want to move into the second floor office space. I don't see uh, what other alternative there is if you choose to have this project go forward. Tasso's position is unique. It's different from Bright Ideas. It's different from any other applicant because he started before this intervening event happened with incentives and approvals for other projects and contractual relationships created for parking. Um, anyone else who comes before you should know that already. In particular, if you change the recommendations in this task force report and have something in writing where someone could see, hey, uh, you know, everything has changed now. The playing field is different, and you shouldn't be counting on what you just read in this task force report. Um, every project is different. This is a perfect project for this location in your downtown. Um, not only unanimously approved, but compliments about the design and the way the building would look and the components of the mixed use that would go into this project. So what, what I'm asking you to do is, is dig down deep, think of why every project should be treated different, why this project should go down the drain uh, and not get the incentives that make it work. I'm asking you to vote for the package that we asked for and let us move forward. Natasso would like to talk and Kathy would like to have a few words. Hi. Um, I, I just wanted to mention that how, what an important factor that the parking is to the project going forward. <coughs> You know, without the parking, um, you, you can't do the project. And quite frankly, we've been working on this project for quite a while. I saw the new garage go up, and I thought, that's wonderful. You know, just as I think Bright Ideas is thinking, I don't think they realize that there's an issue with parking. We think, no, that's fantastic. We won't have an issue. This will help me market the project. But I never dreamt that there would be an inability to get monthly parking passes for a project of this size. So, you know, essentially without that, th without that commitment from the city, you are um, telling any developer that, no, you can't build in this town because you can't have parking. So I just hope you realize the importance. Um, and again, selling the monthly parking passes or making that commitment, we understand it does not mean that they're gonna have a parking space when they get there. So I don't understand the hesitation, you know, to support development in your city um, and understand what's required in order to do that, as well as the financial aspect of it. But I just want to stress the, the parking is critical to it. Thank you. Hi. Um, I'm just going to go a little bit uh, and talk about my thought process. Um, and I'll start by th talking about two businesses, two small businesses that I think transform neighborhoods. One is Slow's Barbecue in Corktown, and the other one is Avalon Bakery in Midtown. I think if it wasn't for those businesses originally, those neighborhoods wouldn't have been transformed so fast. So I'm really, I really want you to consider how important small businesses are in, in your town and in every town. Um, when I say that, it, you've given incentives to some large developments, which is fine, but you also have to consider the smaller developer because that smaller developer <coughs> might be the one development or the one business that really attracts people into your area. The other thing is that Main Street is your Main Street. That's the, that's the key. If you're the DDA, you're the Downtown Development Authority, right? You want Main Street to look beautiful. That one lot is awful. We know that. It was awful before. I spent $40,000 knocking it down. That is the one piece 
to connect second, I think third and second street from the railroad <laughs> tracks to uh, 11 Mile Road. Plus you want nice buildings in your, in your, um, in your neighborhood. You would think that you would create incentives for people like me to, to build a nice building. I, I, I don't mind that what you, what you do with the other incentives, it's just like I don't want to pay the 100% and subsidize those other buildings. <clears throat> any questions for me? And with any questions? For anybody that's been up at the... Uh, Tony, yeah, I'd just like to respond a little bit uh, to what Mr. Samchina was saying. The suggestion appears to be that that the, if not the DDA, the city is picking and choosing, you know, who they help, who they don't help. Um, I, I can only address the DDA. I'm, I'm a newer member on the DDA. But every single project that's been discussed since I've been here has involved, when, when the TIF request has been made, has involved a public component. That's, that's every single meeting, uh, every single project, I think I've been, been on for a year and a half or so. So I, I'm not sure what you've been researching, but if you research the DDA and, and how they've treated these types of requests, you would have found clearly that there's been a, a public component aspect to how the DDA has treated them. So I, I don't know how it could be such a major surprise. Um, and, and the DDA is very supportive. We've had several meetings with, with you and your client, and, and we are very supportive of this project. It seems like it would be a great project. And I think we've done and we've proposed here today what we believe is the maximum we can do to help this project move forward. In fact, we've kind of bent over backwards to um, expand what the public component has previously been defined as to include these ADA components and um, in that way try to help even more than, than maybe we have in the past. It, it just, it, I don't think it's a fair characterization to say that we're leaving your client in, in, in a bad position here because we're doing everything that we've done in the past, uh, everything that we believe is consistent with what the DDA policy has been. And I'm unaware of, of any meetings that took place, um, at these meetings that you referred to when you were encouraged uh, to move forward with this project. I don't know that you've met with any. I'm on a couple committees. I, I'm not familiar with any meetings that, that were held. Um, and then you talk about this, this uh, development, uh, the task force report. And the, the report does, in fact, say that it encourages development, downtown, uh, office, that they've been very successful with that, TIF reimbursement. Well, we are here offering the maximum TIF reimbursement that, that the D, DDA can offer. So I think, contrary to your suggestion, I think we're being very consistent with that task force report. So I, I just don't um, agree that, that the DDA somehow is, is being prejudicial or biased against your client. Uh, I think we are actually supporting uh, this request as best that we can. Well, let me answer in this way because the words I use are not necessarily prejudicial or biased. The, um, uh, I question the, the public component requirement as a past practice because you can't find it in writing anywhere. No one told Tasso or, or Tasso didn't attend multiple meetings of the DDA to uh, determine that based on every project being treated differently, he could assume some kind of pattern and, and make a conclusion. But the big difference is that we have intervening events that everyone in the city participated in that change everything and give you a reason to deviate from your past practice, whatever you believe it is. And that is he is in a unique position because he started before these intervening events and now he's trying to build a project after the intervening events occurred after the incentives were given to other projects that were huge, much not following any precedent in the past, 
and also contractually locking down parking places in these parking decks to the exclusion of others. Those are intervening events that have happened that, that should convince you that it's fine to change your past practice for the one person who is the most negatively affected. The, the, and we can pick apart projects. I'm not sure what the public components of the hotel project were, the Imagine Theater, the, uh, the uh, exercise place, LA Fitness. There's, every project is different, okay? Uh, it's easy to, to look at public components and, and equate them to certain things, but it's hard to look at the size of some of the other incentives and try to figure out what those justifications were and how they fit with the past practice. Um, I'm glad those projects got the incentives. Each of those projects were different also. I just think Tasso should also have the same ability to look at incentives without some artificial past practice standing between him and success. And let me make it clear, it's not state law that would prohibit this. State law allows the incentive that we're asking for. It's not your local DDA ordinance that would prohibit this. It allows it. It's only this unwritten past practice that seems to be the, the hiccup here. It's your own self-created rule that not everyone in the world is going to know about. And no one would predict that it would have this dire consequence. No normal person, property owner, or uh, investor would know that uh, they need to go through this, this minefield. Uh, in particular, Tasso could have been possible to know that shortly after he demolishes buildings is in, in the middle of a process to develop his property doing drawings for the site plan and buying liquor licenses and moving forward, that there'd be these massive incentives for other projects that make his concept that he spent a lot of money on, on already economically unfeasible. You can make it economically feasible with similar incentives that have been awarded other projects. And the end result is no project or this project. This project, you'll get 25% of the increment, which is more than what you're getting now. It's the perfect plan. He would get 75%, build the office space, build it out. But if he doesn't also obtain the ability to lock down some parking places, uh, this project won't go forward either. So that we're asking you to do more than take a stance of non-objecting. For him, you should say, yes, city commission, give him some, the ability to buy those parking passes. And we didn't pick the, the number nilly-willy of 50. You know, you heard our, our previous applicant talk about 60 or 70 for a similar size building. We, we pared it down to the bare minimum. The square footage of this building under your zoning ordinance if it was built outside the CBD, it would require about 100 parking spots. We need the 50 to have the bare minimum to make the two-story project work. Uh, that's all we need, and we need the incentives that equalize our ability to rent the property on the second floor uh, at a rate that's competitive. And we don't know what's going to happen with Henry Ford, if it's medical, if they're going to consume even more parking places than a typical office building, which medical always does. We don't know if that's going to release prospective tenants to um, uh, rent other office space, or whether the prospective tenants who may have been interested in Boji's project were interested because he had the ability to provide parking next door in a parking deck, and those, if those prospective tenants would want to take a chance and lease 10,000 square feet of office with no parking, we don't think they will. So, I mean, the decision here isn't, uh, 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 I think it's clear. There's, there's some clear facts. I think the roadblock is the uh, past practice or policy that you created yourself and you can change yourself for each project that are pre that's presented to you. There's justification here to do it, and I don't see any reason why not to do it. It's good practice for the city to create some equity for someone who was put in this position like Tasso. That's what we're asking for. Just to answer the question, I guess, and again, I'm a newer member of the DDA, but all the discussions uh, of the different projects that I've been involved with, I guess the, in my mind, the best answer to your question is that the DDA cannot and should not build the downtown. It's supposed to help 
the downtown, but it can't fund the downtown because let's say we granted this request that you make, the next person that comes along is going to say all the same things you said, and they're going to say, and my unique condition should be should be considered because you considered well, the last well, well, un set of actually, unique conditions. Actually, Anthony, that's a good point. What if we go ahead and we build? You know, we use all our money and we build and we don't get any, um, um, what do you call it? incentives, okay? And then the city decides that they want more office space and they buy Citizens Bank and all that parking that really needs to be bought and developed, right? And then they give that that um, um, project an incentive. <laughs> what about me? You know, that, that's a really good point that you just made. Then what about me? What, what happens in me? I'm in the middle that got nothing in the sandwich with, you know, two or three or four different projects that got something. I mean, yeah. you, you, it seems to me that there's nothing uh, consistent. You know, I mean, or, or something out there that says, okay, you have to get this information by this date for you to get incentive, or you have to have these plans out by this certain date for you to get incentive, or you, or you don't get it. And especially if I come with a site plan and you approve my site plan, it's probably good courtesy to say, hey, look, there's these other things going on here, or you're going to need 55 parking spaces. Yeah. And, and real specific, if you're worried about what you say to the next guy, the next guy won't be in Tasso's position. He wouldn't have started his project before all these changes happened, before other incentives were given, before parking contracts were issued to other developers. The, the, hopefully the next people who come before you are, know the facts and you can help them by presenting what those facts are by uh, publishing that in documents that you can read on your website or online or, or, or wherever. But he's the only one that started before the zoning concept would be being grandfathered, so to speak, if you were before the Zoning Board of Planning Commission. He's the only one in this unique position that I know of. Maybe there's someone else out there, I don't know. But it's not going to be the next 20 people who acquire property in Royal Oak and want to create a project. They would be in a different position. So this unique project that started at this point in time in the past should be considered and not bogged down with a past practice. Mr. So, Gina, you, you keep on referring to, and you did it in committee, you keep on referring to uh, we should publish the facts and, and, and what the deal is and this, that, and the other. And at the same time, as I said to you in committee, you want, quote, unquote, the deal that we should have published a long time ago, but now you're, but then you were telling, telling us that you want us to do something different for TASO. Okay? So, so just hold on one second. Let me just address the deal and, 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 and the way things are. And we said it to you over and over again, and the bottom line is there is no set rules top to bottom. And the reason makes sense, in, in my opinion, and I think in most people's opinions. When the first hotel came to us or whatever, the, the deal that we were willing to offer, the, the incentivizing that we were willing to do, is going to be a lot different than the second one. And there has been a second one who came to, to this committee, and we told him, sorry. There is nothing we can do. Atkin happened to be the first building. They definitely got incentivized parking to a degree that we would not do today. I'll flat out tell you that. And the reason being, they were the first building, okay? The whole thing about changing the landscape, I'm not even going to get into, okay? Because I, I, I'm, I, we've been back and forth on that. There's a lot more that goes into that. Okay, whether it's public land versus private land, whether it's the price paid for the land, if the price is fair or not, that I don't know. The bottom line is, I'll just go back to this and say, the committee would love to have this project. The committee is grateful that we're not looking at that old brown, ugly bank that used to be there. Okay? The bottom line is, we just don't know how we can do it to the level that you want. And, and, and we went through it time and time again. This board did not make the deal with Boji on the five and a half million dollars. This board did not make the deal with Etkin on the land for a dollar. We took it over, but we did not make that deal. What this board did do 
is this board sold six, the 696 property to sing for $2.5 million. They're building a beautiful luxury apartment project with 250 apartments with no TIF. That's what this board did. On and on and on. So we have not, quote unquote, changed the playing field to any degree. And as for the parking, I mean, you're making the parking germane to everything. Well, that we flat out don't control. Okay, and, and, and again, timing is an issue here because as we explained to you in committee, that's up in the air right now. Nobody knows. I, we don't control it. We're not happy. With, we're not happy with the situation the way it is. Whether, whether the, the only thing I can tell you is that Tasso's location with this is prime for the Center Street deck. It's right out its back door. Okay, I drive by it or walk by it every single day. Okay, and both of these lots are closed out here, and there's always 300 spots available. The other thing I'll say about the permits, and again, I'm going on here, as far as the permits go, people who usually come to an office building are coming in early, okay? There's usually spots available in the garages early. Okay, well, but, but, but again, this is it, where it, we it, disagreed at the committee meeting, too. But, but, but it's beyond our control. Of the parking is beyond our control. I, I think it's in your control to remedy the consequences of a lack of parking. Uh, and, uh, well, 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 and, and we did the best we could. We built, we, 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 we took over the Etkin deal and used the, the, the tip gain from that without giving a dime back to him to build the new structure. Yeah, and I'm not going to debate you if, uh, head on on those issues and argue again. We argued at the committee level like this too. So um, my point is that money is fungible. There's a legal concept that goes along with that. It's like when you own the restaurant and you're making soup. Once the ingredients are all mixed together, they're mixed together. There's one thing. Your money is commingled with the city's money. It's all taxpayer money that comes out of these businesses from the downtown. And uh, whether you artificially label it, it's a guarantee for a parking deck, or you're going to give the city money for land that they're going to give to Etkin, or if you're guaranteeing seven or eight hundred thousand dollars a year of debt service for a city center project, and that frees up money for the city to give five and a half million to Boji, you're a partner with with the city. You always have been, and you participated as a partner in the incentives. And however you label it is irrelevant to the guy who's paying the taxes and who's suffering the consequences of a series of projects that never had the parking studies, traffic studies or economic impact studies presented to the city commission or the planning commission. Uh, people at the, your committee lamented of the fact there weren't parking studies done at the beginning of all this. Economic impact studies are done after parking and traffic studies are done to determine what the project will do to the surrounding area. That wasn't done. There's a one-page study done about with multipliers from showing 700 people will be in the downtown. But there's no study done of what's going to happen if every parking deck is filled and you can't buy parking passes. I don't care if there's 300 spots there now. No one wants, we, we need a guarantee that we can have 50 of them by buying passes and then he can pre-lease the property and, and, and build a two-story building. It's as simple as that. So that's what the decision-making process is here. There's no legal or, or, or technical barrier to granting this, just like you take every other project and look at them differently and separately. Um, you can move forward with this, and you won't have to consider other applicants being in the same situation in the future because they won't be. Tasso's the only one in this situation because he started before these other intervening events happen. So we're asking you to do the right thing here and have him go forward with the project. It's the right thing for him. But it's also the right thing for the downtown to have this two-story project that's ready to go, finish up some construction drawings, and get a building permit. That's all that's needed. All the other approvals are granted. I'd like to just add one thing. The parking requirement is a requirement of a lender. To finance this project, you have to have the commitment for the parking passes. I mean, it's that simple. It's not, 
well, tell the lender, drive by, there's 300 spaces open. We, we've got to have it as a but, requirement. So you, you guys are making it, again, you're making it germane to, to the whole process. Well, so if, we have, if, if even, even God forbid, uh, I mean, not God forbid, but, but if somebody said, okay, we're willing to do this, and, but the parking's not included, you guys say, sorry, you throw up your arms and walk away. I mean, that's, you're, 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 you're and, and, and it's outside of this committee's control. I just don't understand. I, I, I just don't. I, I just don't understand why you're why you're hitching your wagon to that. Just, just Ms. Wilson, the bank thinks there's that much of a distinction between a uh, parking pass that that doesn't guarantee parking and and just having a structure right out the back because the parking pass really doesn't guarantee right, but parking. But if it's um, you know it's no, no different than like downtown Detroit or any municipality. They've got to know that there's parking, otherwise that office space becomes unmarketable. Mm -hmm. And they want a monthly permit. You know, they don't want to have to deal with my employees late because they had to drive around to three different spots looking for, and I understand <coughs> there's no guarantee, but the mindset is if you have a parking permit. So it's permit, a mindset. That's, it's, right, right. It's having a parking permit, it, it makes them believe they have parking even though it doesn't. Right. There's Yeah, we understand there's no guarantee. <coughs> but, you know, the... I guess the question is, you guys are saying there's no objection to it, but you're not recommending it. And I, I don't understand that kind of a play on words. Let me just yes. say, so we, I do, my office does a lot of work with developers, and you're right. There's not a project I've worked on in a downtown area where the developer doesn't try and get some form of guaranteed parking in some capacity. I agree. That's just commonplace. I have no idea if the lender needs it. That's not you know, my, uh, my job to know that. So, <clears throat> um, I don't see any mention of parking in here. I mean, so, so if, if you recommend scroll down, down, scroll resolution down. at the bottom, there you go. Uh, I miss that. Yep. So, I mean, I don't know what the right number is, but to me, that seems something that you would ask for that we'd have to talk through, but I wouldn't have a problem with some form of parking you know, passes personally. Right. right. Um, I'm not on the business marketing committee, obviously, <clears throat> in reading through this. I'm trying to put some of the pieces together. I didn't have a chance to uh, read through all the emails. But it seemed like this, this was what the business marketing committee was recommending after the meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. And this is not what y your client wants, right, correct. Mr. Simchina? Correct. There, there's a deviation in uh, what we requested in the uh, recommendation from the committee to the extent where the project can't go forward. If, if this is if the passed. committee's recommendation is adopted we wouldn't go forward and, um, <clears throat> so your recommendation is 75 percent of the total to the, the total increase the not just these uh, other, not if, just if I can the big difference is uh, the total cost that you're dealing with not the percentage they requested 75 percent TIF reimbursement the committee's recommending that as well they're asking to collect money over a 15-year period to help build the entire building and the total cost of the entire building. Okay. The committee's recommending that the cost be limited to the ADA compliance stuff and the streetscape. Got it. Uh, they've defined that as the public component, so they're they're not recommending building the office space. And the TIF reimbursement wouldn't build the office space. It would be an increment that equalizes some of the differential between subsidized rental rates and market rental rates. Sure. That you okay. I'm sorry, but, but that argument does not really have any... You're not competing with the Etkin building. You're not competing with the Boji building. They're fully leased. Anybody that's looking as a possible tenant here is not looking at those places. And, and you think they'd be willing to pay more? And square foot rent and have no parking. I don't think so. Well, I want to separate. That's, that's the, I, I want to separate the parking discussion from the. You know, well, we're you're operating in a, in a theoretical uh, aspect. I think. No, we're I think you are. <laughs> no, we're operating in reality. We won't build a project if we can't equalize these incentives. That's reality. I thought we'd beat this to death. The, uh, the increment. The amount of tax money that DDA would receive if you granted this request would be more than what you're receiving now. It's, it's the future tax money that the project generates. <coughs> it's the traditional incentive that's recommended in the task force report. 
it's the type of incentive that's often often a right. component of an incentive right. package. I think it's <coughs> it's time to probably pull it back on this side. Thank you, Mr. Right. Simchina. I think this is the incentive that we've granted to most properties, with one exception. And I feel kind of silly after what my point was on the previous one, and that's that this has 75 and we've been doing 80. That was the ask. Oh, I'll move the, gonna, I'll move the I'll move this but change it to 80. All right, so we have a motion on the table as written with the exception of not to exceed 75 became becoming not to exceed 80. So I got here second by Director Yes, but Is there any discussion about this? Very quick. Yes. Very, very quick. Um, I just want to say I know that the committee struggled with this very much so um, we had multiple, multiple meetings with the applicant, and after they left, we spent considerable amount of time trying to figure out ways to participate in this project. Um, I think we did come up with a couple great ideas, and they are part of the resolution, um, and I do support that. I think Mr. Simchina makes some very good bo uh, points. He's, he's addressed some, some issues within the city um, I think he makes some good points. Me as a business owner that's here in Royal Oak, I have to deal with some of these same issues that that you have presented tonight. Um, I think this the, the committee, and I won't speak for the whole DA, would like to see this project move forward. Um, I think we have a great business person in Tasso sitting right there. Um, and I think it would be a shame if, 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 if he couldn't move forward. But again, I'll go, I go, my last statement is I go back with what Mr. Um, Johnson has addressed is we kept hearing that there is an, quote, economic disadvantage to leasing office space. And I, I just, I, that's where I have trouble with this, uh, this portion of the project. Um, um, the previous applicant um, came to us for a TIF reimbursement to do some upgrades on the building for ADA compliant. He did not ask for uh, TIF reimbursement in order to help lease his office space, um, which is what we're talking about here. So, and I think we have other buildings, other offices here in the downtown that need to be leased. And I'm not sure that the DDA should be in a position to, you know, to uh, be handing out TIF, uh, you know, reimbursements to help. There's one right across the street from the project at 10, 10, what is that, 109 above on the Amos. That office space needs to be leased too. Um, and it has been vacant for a long time. So um, that being, that, that's, my, that's my comments. Anybody else? Well, I, I do like this plan but I'm not going to vote for it because I don't see any sense in supporting something that is not going to, the project's not going to move forward. Why do I bother to vote for this and set further precedent? So I won't be supporting it, Dr. Asmick. But just about the parking, I, th I think with the overall project, we, we made it pretty clear that the what ifs, the there's nobody else out there. How do we know? We don't know who else is out there. We don't know what hardships are out there. And, and we back, uh, asked back at the beginning, what, what's the basis for the request? And there has to be a basis, and, and it's really a hardship request, and, and there is no, uh, this board has, has never really dealt with hardship requests and, and, and factored them into any, any uh, assistance that's been given, at least since, since I've been on the board. And, and so I think consistency, as you mentioned, is very important. How, how do we develop the downtown without consistency? If you start doing it on an ad hoc basis, I, I think it's 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 chaos. Well, we've, uh, right, we're, I'm sorry, Tasso. We're done at this point. I know that's why I was going to say we're done with this point. Yeah. But it, it does seem to be inconsistent when you are right, doing Tasso, it ad hoc. Tasso, we're, we're I did want to mention. I did want to mention the parking. Uh, but I'm, this is not a two-way discussion here. No, no. Okay. Okay. I did want to mention the parking. It, it seems like if, if, if the lender that may be able to figure out a way to, to do some creative financing or maybe there's a way to put this project together, 
um, if parking is 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 a big hurdle, I I just don't know how the difference between a parking permit that doesn't guarantee you anything makes such a difference to a lender. <clears throat> I would be willing to support the 50 parking passes or or whatever amount if they if they need 50 because it it, it helps this project and we're building another deck. I, the project is not coming on anytime soon and of course they'd be I think uh, based on the project happening you can't you don't get the passes unless this project goes forward. I, I, I'm, it helps them lease it. Helps yeah, lease it, 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 if, if that, that's why. if that, yeah. having that in their pocket helps them move forward, I, I think the DDA should should be able to to recommend to the to the city commission that that they get the passes w with those qualifications if they move forward and, and, and there's not going to be any reserve spots like in the structure. Mr. Chairman, I'm perfectly willing to talk about parking, but that's not the motion that's on the table. I'd, I'd like to separate this, get the first part taken I think it's care all of. one motion, is it not? No, no, no. it says it has no, no it's just, oh, okay. so but, there's no parking. It's just a technical question. And I would like to address the, your comment is, I don't think it's appropriate to vote against the offer just because They've indicated that the offer isn't going to be acceptable to them. I think we well, should my put fears, out there what we're willing to do. My fear is that the offer then, if it's approved and they don't move forward, can be used as precedent. And we'll have someone up, else up here saying that that's precedent. But it is basically There's no what such we thing as precedent. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> this is, this is a negotiated <laughs> agreement. It's an no evolving business community, trucks. guys. It's an evolving business community. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, but that's all I've heard. decide to do it or not do it. There's no, there's what the, the only the only thing that's been fairly consistent in, in, in the action and has been brought up since the beginning on every project is having some sort of public component for your TIF reimbursement. Every project is different. There is no such thing as press. Correct. But so vote how you want. But that's, that's not. <clears throat> Any others? Anything else on this motion? Seeing that, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Was opposed? No. All right. Do we want to address? Parking? I'd like to start that with one question, and the answer is probably in the documents in here, but I've been looking for it and I'm not seeing it. How many square feet of office are we talking about? Ten thousand. Yeah, a little bit more than ten thousand. Each floor is a little bit more than ten thousand. Like to make a motion to approve or recommend the approval of 50 parking passes if this project were to move forward the whatever the standard qualifications are uh, that the DDA makes such recommendations I got a motion from director Yusbeck second and a second by director Krieger any discussion I, just 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 a, a point of discussion um some of our concerns at, at the committee level um, were, again, that I, and I'm not sure exactly what, what, what the city's position is on permits, and I understand we're just making a recommendation, but we're sort of, the way I understand it, sort of waiting for this whole thing to shake out, like the new structure to be built, and, 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 and the dynamics are changing daily, literally. I mean, it, it, we were building this structure out here, and originally the Boji building was going to be, quote-unquote, 700 employees, and now it's Henry Ford Hospital, and, and it's 200 doctors, nurses, and whatever, and the, we're not sure about the visiting patients and all of that. Um, and and, and uh, Ms. Wilson brought up in the meeting, if, if you had done a, a parking study and all that, that's near and dear to our heart. We understand that. Um, I, for one, am not sure of the um, impact that's going to happen over in the farmer's market lot when, 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 when those buildings start to get built. And so I'm not saying there's a moratorium from the city on this. And again, I know we're looking down the road, so, and I, I hate to sound like I'm talking outside of both sides of my mouth, but I, I guess it's, sure, it's okay if we do make the recommendation. I understand why the, why the permits are needed. Um, I'm, and, and I understand we're not setting precedent, 
But if, if we move this along, I'm just, I, I'm going to ask you guys, is there any concern that we move this along, yet we have people who have been in the, in, in, in the, in the central business district for 20 years who work, who work here who can no longer get permits today? And that's today. I understand it may change. Is that a concern of this board? I'm, I'm just asking, the, believe me, there's no agenda with that, but, but it's something I think we need to think about. I mean, I think everyone at this table has heard complaints from, from um, whether it's employees or business owners who, can't, who used to be able to get a permit but can't get one now. Am I correct in that? I believe, uh, mm. Director yes. Johnson. I know, that, Johnson? To be, that's, that's I know that to be true. Okay. 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 And that, that, that's my concern, is that we're, we're moving this along while we have other people out there who can't get a permit now. That's, we've had people complain that they weren't able to buy a permit. Uh, but that's really because, that's the ones that have, are just showing up to buy are coming in too late because people are coming in sooner and buying them now. Uh, we have because but is there of the a fixed partners. number? Uh, there's a fixed number, and and, and the way I understand it, it we're going to fixed, look at it. It's fixed because Greg assigns a number because he's very concerned about selling more permits than he actually has parking spaces. Sure. And he hasn't adopted the airplane strategy yet that you have <laughs> yeah. to sell more tickets than you actually have seats because some people don't show up. Uh, and it's understandable. So, so is it fair when I say that, that we're kind of, that, that this is a fluid situation with regard to permits? Yeah, very okay. much so. And we're okay. in a, in a, we're in a circumstance that. right now where we've just closed a couple of lots. Uh, we're going to be moving city employees over there shortly. Uh, the Etkin building just opened. It isn't even quite fully occupied yet. Sure. There is still... One big one coming in. One company, one law firm. Left Which is to come one, in. well, one floor, the way I understand it, with 140 employees. No, it's about half a floor. Okay, okay. Then. Because the the second floor of, okay. of the building, half of the second floor is occupied. The, the third and fourth floors are fully occupied right now. Uh, I'm just doing math on my calculator and, and remembering things out of my head, but it looks to me like you're asking for almost three times the amount of parking on a per square foot basis as the Boji building has. Well, the ordinance for office is one for either 200 or 225. If it's, if it's 200 and there's 10,000 square feet of office, that would be 50 spots. Uh, and, you know, and that's one of the two floors, not, you know, we're not counting this. That's sort of the retail, right? Yeah, the yeah, ground floor would be retail and restaurants. So we're not really, if the whole building square footage was considered to be around 100, we're asking for the accommodation that for the office above, which would be only be 50. And, uh, and we could get by with that. Well, you know, the, the uh, ground floor parking will have to be, you know, ad hoc is, is whatever becomes available. But, uh, and, and you're right, it's, it's the pre-leasing that's the most critical, and uh, the lenders don't want to lend any money without some pre-leasing. There's a component of self-financing here, but because of the cost increases, we're, we're going to be financing some of this. But even if Tasso is able to finance everything, to, he needs to pre-lease some of this office space in order to justify going forward. So the, I, I the, parking, the parking is a a critical component of the leasing and 50 spots is what's needed. Um, is 50 spots, well 50 spots is what, and, and, and again, right, right, wrong or indifferent. I can remember when we sat down with the Atkin group and went over there 75,000 square feet, they were really clear about needing permits for certain people and, and just like, you know, I mean, just like any other offices, there's certain well, people. It, just to, I guess to qualify, as my understanding is Mr. Semtima indicated, he's using a zoning ordinance standard to come that would apply for outside to CBD for where he's coming up with a 50 and a 10,000 square feet. Yeah. Ed can ask for one, three per thousand, three per thousand. which would only put this at 30. Correct. Um, so you, you that's get, what I was, that's what I was you going. Get, you get different numbers uh, based on what 
and what if you're I, using. If I'm calculating it right, what we did in the Boji building would put this at 17. Okay. So. Well, you you guaranteed 300, but they have 700 occupants, so it's, they're going to overwhelm the deck anyway. That more than 300. But it's like <laughs> they had. Well, and then so the guy, Henry Ford, they, they had 200 employees. What's that? Henry Ford's only going to have 200. Employees. Correct. Correct. And and, and I, I and, and what, I, what I'm saying, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be glib here, but Henry Ford will have 200. But but it sounds like and, 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 and this day. is our point about how fluid <laughs> this situation is. You're I mean, right. Really. I mean, that change from it being a general office building to being a medical, medical office to the mom, right? Change and, the relationship between visitors and 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 yeah, and the parking and requirements considerably. And we know the parking requirements when there's a medical related uh, user are higher than a general office. So sure, but 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 you've got you've got almost yeah, one we, one quarter of the employees. Right, well, I think we got a motion on the table. Yeah, it's so yeah, 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 yeah. just my thought process for the motion is that we spent. Spend, that we spent a ton of money building these structures. Uh, we talk all the time about the number is 300 left, 400 open spaces, right. 500. This project's coming down the line probably after this next parking structure is completed. So if Definitely. the trade-off is getting this project built it, 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 versus there may be a few, uh, we might be a few permits short, I'm, I'm willing to, to take that gamble to help this project move forward. So that's the basis of the motion. Could I have the motion read back or repeated? A uh, motion is to recommend to the city commission to award 50 permits to uh, to this project, 50 parking passes. Is that the way if it goes? Yeah. What's that? If, if, if the project is built. Yeah, based on what's yeah. presented. Should, I just, I don't disagree. I'm just, should the Tim or Mr. Johnson, maybe you can answer this question. Should the applicant, in any case, not only this case, but should the applicant request for a specific number be the guideline for what's put forth? Or should it be based on something? Do you, do you get where I'm kind of going with this? Is what if they said we want 100 parking passes? Well. What, you know what I'm saying? I, I, my, what, what? my comment was is that I will support parking passes, but I won't support 50 parking passes. That's way more than we've given well, that's what I, anybody else. I, I think I could support making a recommendation to the commission, but I, I think that somebody in our, somebody in City Hall or somewhere down the line needs to figure out what that number should be. Well, I think that's the right way to proceed. Whether well, it's based, whether it's based on Mr. Sorry, this is, this criteria, comments on this is on the side of the table. Okay. Whether it's based on his criteria or whether it's based on past practices of what the city has done for other projects or some forth, so forth. But that's what that's what I'm trying to say. Is I. Um, it's always a negotiation. So, yeah, or you bring an architect into it. Any, or you bring an architect into it. We, we, uh, we can only do what we can do. Uh, Director Johnson, would you, would you support thirty? In this situation, well, how about I? How about I? Suggest, I know we got an amendment on the table. How about I suggest that you, we look at the rich study for what their ratio is, for what they established for office in the CBD, and use that number. That's a good idea. Since third party arbitrator, yeah. I'm not picking it. They're not picking it. I, it's just, I don't know what that whatever that is. ratio is in there is what you'll recommend. At least it's I'd like to amend my motion to be consistent with with what. The Mr. Twing study. just said, rich based on the rich study for office in the downtown. We don't know what that is. No, wait, 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 no, you're talking about the one that we that we that we subsidized that we got back. Yeah, their uh, their uh, their in March I think shared parking back. ratio analysis that looked at looked at the shared analysis of how many people were there, or not there. And this is a up. document that exists yeah. currently that yeah, we just need to go and reference. Just run a number and it'll spin it out. <laughs> but you have no idea what that number That's is That's the motion. Be. Okay, yeah, so it's going to be, be a lot motion. less than 50. What's that? It's going to be a lot less than 50. Is it going to bring it back into about in line with what we did with that Ken and Boji? Probably. So you've amended your motion. And your motion. And Director Krieger second. Well, I mean, I, I'd like, I don't see a, a major, I'd like to know what that is, though. The only, my, my only hesitation is this. If it comes back and it's 10, 
you know, I want to make sure we're giving, let's say that the project does go okay. forward, I want to make sure we're giving them the right tools to market it. And, and then it, it does matter. When they're trying to get tenants, they're going to say, and we have this many parking, it's an incentive for an adoption. That, that's my only concern about it. I agree with Director Kruger. If we're going to do it, if we're, if we're going to do it, let, 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 let's, let's give them the necessary. And, and, I, and, and in my opinion, 50 is not the number. Would, would, what, what if we go 25? I mean, we're talking ten thousand. I just, I don't, I'm just not sure. I like using an arbitrary number okay. because just they're using an arbitrary number. Now we're, you know what I'm saying? Well, I just like to have it to have some sort of basis behind it. We're, this is a recommendation. The recommendation, I think, should be based on something concrete. This rich study is concrete. They take that recommendation to the city commission if they want to vary from. From the rich study or the recommendation, then it's your prerogative. The commission to has do the it. right to do Mr. that. Mr. Yeah. Semchina is uh, very persuasive, so he can. Uh, not, not today, though. <laughs> he can uh, approach the city commission with any variables that that are relevant to them. But we should just for you know base our recommendation on, on something uh, like Mr. Twing suggests. Sure, may I comment? So, so I, I need I need the person who made the second to. So what are we amending it to? Uh, we're recommending recommend passes based on the ratio, the office ratio in the CBD study from Rich. All right, and then they're going to take it to the commission and, and then see where it goes. Right. See where it goes. Right. May I make one comment before you vote? Sure. I just to, I, I tried to present a rational basis for fifty uh, when we discussed this with the committee. It's it's taking the size of the building cutting it in half, which is the office area, and then applying the zoning ordinance requirement if you're outside the CBD. Um, we could use more parking passes than that because there'll be key employees working on the first floor. So we're not asking for that. Right, we, Mr. Simchino, you know. okay. you well, thank take you. Take that up with them. Yeah, take that up then, okay, because uh, we've got a motion on the table. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we got a motion on the table. What, can you read that motion again, Jim? <laughs> it's a recommendation uh, to the city commission that uh, the number of parking spaces or number of parking passes be be sold based on the rich CBD analysis uh, for the project as presented if it moves forward. Okay. City's good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'll vote for this even though we're voting on something and it's not going to go forward, but I'll, I'll support this. So any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Aye. Number nine, holiday advertising. I can take Director Gunn. Yeah. Um, I have to leave in about 15, just letting you know I have to leave in about 15 minutes. I have an appointment at 6.30. So. Okay, that's fine. I'm not saying rush it. I'm just, when I get up and leave, <laughs> I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be rude. <laughs> okay. Sean. Um, okay. Uh, holiday advertising. Um, Tuesday, September 11th, the Consumer Marketing Committee met with uh, representatives from Factory Detroit to go over progress on uh, developing the advertising content. Um, during that committee meeting, it was discussed to... Uh, to have Factory Detroit produce four additional holiday television commercials uh, for which Factory <coughs> Detroit would not take a fee. Uh, they would do that for free for us, uh, but they would require the amount of $4,000 just to cover the production expenses, and that covers <coughs> things like uh, the cost of the voiceover, and I have this included here too. You just bear with me, I can reference it. Um, covers the price of their talent for the voiceover, uh, the production, um, and then the trafficking of, of the content as well. So uh, the Consumer Marketing Committee is, is uh, recommending that the uh, $4,000 uh, be spent to produce those four commercials. Okay. Anybody have any questions for, for Sean? So I just I just jumped back here, but this is this is solely the production cost, correct? Correct. Okay. And um, I'm 
sorry, I'm right. trying to expedite this a little bit. The stuff, the stuff later on is the placement, right. correct? Okay. Right, the placement, it. right. And uh, the scripts for these commercials are included here as attachments as well. Got it. Just a caveat. Um, these commercials won't be limited to television. We can use them in social media, and they can be broken correct. down okay. to um, things. So, yeah, you guys like this? I'll, I'll move. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> Motion by Director Peter, second by Director Spaya. Any discussion? No. <laughs> Any discussion? I sound like an auctioneer. <laughs> Seeing no discussion, I'll call. Aye. For a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. All right. This is going to be cool. Our next item here <laughs> um, Main Street Oakland County Micro Grant. That's not mine. I can take this one too. Um, at the last meeting, the DDA approved participation in one of the Oakland County Main Street Flagstar grants. It's a grant that awards up to $2,500 for projects. It's a matching grant. Um, so we applied for uh, the repair of the Veterans Memorial um, located near the library. We applied for $1,200. Um, last or About two weeks ago, I received word that that grant was awarded. So. Um, this motion is to accept that grant. Um, I will say that uh, talking with the city manager, um, they're currently talking about potentially moving the Veterans Memorial because of redesigning the park space. So the repair, you know, the timetable on the repair may be contingent upon that. So we may not be addressing this immediately. But I don't believe that a, a timetable has been established for that. So, but so let's say that it wasn't being moved. You could repair it when? Uh, I contacted Oakland County and let them know of that development, and they said that we would have up to a year to expend the funds. It's already in their in their budget for next year. Because so. if when it is moved for the park, that won't be for over a year, year and a half. You know, no. maybe, maybe. Right, so I mean, for twelve hundred bucks, we can fix it now. I guess is the disrepair gonna the, get the, worse? The, con time? the concern is that would moving it cause more the repair to break? Yeah, because okay. they're they're filling a crack. If they move it, and I'm not saying they are gonna move it, but <clears throat> it was discussed during some of the it, the charrettes. Is this, is this is this due to the change in in the the building and the entrances and what have you? Because I well, it, it ends up redesigned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, we um, these buildings go away. We end up with a park on this site. So we run it into that and, and include the library lawn, swing the memorial around, or do we leave the memorial where it is and basically maybe keep the whole library lawn separate from the park? I don't know which way they're going to go. <clears throat> but have you seen a schedule on that yet? Because I haven't seen even when. Because oh, the only schedule I've seen is the the community engagement ends in December. Right. Well, but, but that's actually all we've got under contract right now yeah, is the so community I engagement the process. Day. I guess the answer to go back to your question though was timing on it. That question is what going to get answered when? It's correct. Does it think a year from now? Six well, we'll, from we'll now, we will. We will. I would expect that we'll know. What we're going to do, it won't actually be done. Yeah, then, That's then fine. I just said we're, yeah. we're yeah. going to so move it. Based on that, I, I would think that we want to yeah. go ahead, get the grant, match it, and, and fix, fix it. it. Yeah, let's just fix it. Fix it. If we move it, and it be careful. Be careful. Fix it again. Because, yeah. Yeah. Because put a, yeah. Put a phrase. Because otherwise, there's no way. There's no way that the memorial is going to be moved. Before, no. Well, in less than a year. Yeah. No. No. That's not possible. Well, yeah. So I'd rather see us just do yeah. this Brand and get it taken yeah. care of. It's been out there for a long time. <clears throat> What's, what was done to it was fine from a pedestrian point of view, but it's just filled in with some silica, whatever it was filled in with. Let's let's get it fixed right. I agree. I think, I think it's actually epoxy, but it's whatever. epoxy. Yeah. Let's get the grant. Let's fix let's it. it. But I mean, I, that's my opinion. Someone's going to make what a motion. They, what they didn't do is they didn't level it. They didn't put granite dust on top of no. it, you know. So yeah, you know, it's like they, they put it in and dust. they probably used a finger to trowel it. Yeah, and and got some talk and so you can actually see the divot, but it is structurally sound. Director Yesbeck. Yes, I uh, I will make a motion to 
accept the grant. Well, accept the grant part to that and, and match it and match it. Okay, all right. So I have a motion. Did I hear Director I'll London? Yes. Okay, second by Director London. Any discussion? I will say that uh, I did have that contact go look at at the issue, Leonardo. I don't think you can have anybody fix this that doesn't have a beautiful Italian name. Uh, You're probably <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and he said. Uh, he said, yes, this, this looks terrible. It's a beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful thing there. And he did submit a proposal, but it wasn't specific enough. I, I just assumed that this, this body would want more specificity. So he's, he's uh, elaborating on, on the work that he would do to fix the crack and, and clean it um, so that we can look at that. Hopefully I'll have that very soon. Well, but are, we, are we within the required budget? I think so. Okay. Can you ask him if you can fix it so that, 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 that if we have to move it, that it won't fall apart? Well, I would, I, 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 based on the discussion, I was going to ask him if there is a crack, would it be better to fix it before it was moved, if it was going to be moved for the safety of, of, the, of the thing, or, or it's an interesting question to ask. There might be more things that happen when you move it anyway. I mean, right. it's just, don't but anyway, I should have that soon. Okay, good. Any other discussion? Seeing none, the call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the Small Business Saturday. I believe Sean, you again. Um, so this year I'm coming back actually with the same request, same dollar amount that I used last year um, to produce uh, the ornaments, the uh, holiday shopping bags, um, and then the, uh, the funds to uh, promote uh, small Business Saturday on social media. Um, last year we were in the top four in the county of uh, purchases made that registered with the county for their contest that they had. So um, I think it was us, Birmingham, Rochester, and I think I think Lake Orion was the other one. But uh, So we were in the top four, so I'd like to see if maybe we can do a little better than that, maybe be in the top two, maybe number one if we... If we uh, put some effort into it. Um, I was talking with the Consumer Marketing Committee at their, their most recent meeting and, uh, about this issue, and um, we discussed actually promoting some of this at uh, a potential holiday tree lighting, too, which is also on the agenda, um, in order to kind of build some momentum toward this, too. So uh, I am, or the committee is recommending a budget of $7,000 for Small Business Saturday. John, I thought in the follow-up to last year, the discussion was that the merchants really didn't want to do the totes because they took up too much room, that they just wanted to do the ornament. The feedback that I got was actually about the passport, that they wanted to discontinue the passport. It wasn't very popular. The ornaments and the totes, I actually received a lot of positive feedback on, and the parking, for that matter. That's a separate issue. Quick question, uh, and this is going to be a common theme in the next three items from my end. Do we have this uh, in our budget? No, that's why it's in front of you. Okay, so this is not in the budget? No, that's why it's back. Okay. We did it last year, but okay, we just thought uh, maybe it was one. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Probably it wouldn't make a difference if you have a tote on just the ornament. <clears throat> I don't think you need, you necessarily need both. Is that your question? The ornament was, I think, the huge hit in my store. Yeah, I, I just remembered hearing some of the merchants didn't feel like they had enough room to have all the totes set up to be able to... Really? Okay. The, I, yeah, I didn't hear any negative feedback on the totes. And the only comment I got on the ornament is I think you you need to make a slight change each year to the design of it. it yeah, yeah. And we put the year on it. There was some talk about putting the year, and then there was some talk of just changing the color scheme on it just to make it kind of unique every year. So people collect them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll move the resolution. Moved by Director Krieger. I'll second. Second by Director Bagley. Any discussion? Do, do, do a good job. Do a good job. Yep. Yep. Seeing that, call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> the next item, holiday tree lighting. Is this Sean again? 
fun. <laughs> I was I was really busy last, trade spots. last week writing all of these. Um, the uh, Consumer Marketing Committee is recommending to amend the contract with 360 events to uh, include the management of a holiday tree lighting, uh, which they'd like to take place on Thursday, November 15th. Whoops. 15th? 15th, right? 15th. 15th, yes. Is, um, it, okay. is this in addition to or in place of... The city's tree lighting. Right. That's what I was going to ask. Is it the city's <laughs> tree or is this, this the Washington was born tree? from those discussions. I'm sure okay. I met with. Well, in, in this year, keep in mind the, 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 the city's tree, which is was chopped down and exists strictly as a stump that I'm saving to be carved. Uh, the city's second tree is the one in front of the courthouse, which is going to be in the middle of a construction zone. Uh, okay. You answered the question. <laughs> All right. We, we worked closely with... Um, the farmers market ab about this. Uh, the farmers market event is on November 29th. Right. Um, the initial discussion was that we wait to light our tree till November 29th. And um, after talking to some stakeholders, it it's not a good idea to wait that long to light the lights of the city. Yeah. So Shelley has agreed to eliminate or play up the tree lighting somewhere within the walls of the farmers market during their event whether they hang something from the ceiling I'm not sure what they're okay. going to do so they're that they're good with that so we kind of pulled this back for our city tree lighting which is the large tree that we purchased last year um, so I, I did ask Greg to see if it's technically feasible to turn on all the lights uh, the downtown lights simultaneously what? I so think we, we had talked to the Gardens about that. that too. Did he say it was possible? He didn't know yet. No, <laughs> well, there's, there's, English Gardens gave us. There's two issues that are going. I guess the questions I'll bring them up with you now because you want to do that. Is one, English Gardens. This is earlier than normal, um, and, they, and they normally don't. The swags. Is the intent to have those up by this date as well? Or On the lampposts. Right, because that's they normally those aren't up until. The weekend before Thanksgiving. Hmm. So there's there's a little. This is the November fifteenth deadline is moving up when they normally would have all the stuff up. Normally the swags are probably the one thing they're a little concerned about. But if you want those up too, I need to know. Uh, and then the side I note is, up, wouldn't you? So they're having a lot of trouble with the uh, outlets they plug into. And they've asked EPS to replace several of them. It hasn't occurred yet. So whether they can all come on at once or not depends on those outlets. I think the drama of just the trees coming on at the same time would be cool. Okay. Um, to be, I'll be honest with you. I didn't think the 15th was Nearly that enough. early. It's it's a, a week before Thanksgiving. It's the Thursday before Thanksgiving. If... Uh, I'm not married to the, the swags having to be up. It would be nice if they were. Is it going to cost us extra money if they move No, on? I mean, putting them up or taking them, they're going to put them up. They're just going to be up. The Taking a week's worth of work away, though, you're taking the hours of hanging lots of lights. You're taking whatever number of days and hours they normally spend in that period. That's And it's fine. I, I think it would be difficult to try and do the swags. Um, the lights will be fine. My bigger question out of English Gardens right now is given the outlets and their propensity to be out, whether we're going to be able to flip them all on. So that's still what we're trying to work through with DPS. I'm just going to put this out there as well. <laughs> we could just turn the lights on when they're ready and not make an event out of it. That's fine. If it works, it works. If, if, it's it, no works, if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. That? I just want to. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> either either one works. Um, it would be nice to have a little event, some choirs and hot chocolate and all that sort of stuff. Do you? I'm sorry, Gary. Do you mean in place of an event? N no. Well, if 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 they can't technically do that, they can't technically do it. Then we just do it like we do every other year and put the lights on. And not have the event. Correct. Okay. Is it possible to, to approve this and earmark yep. the money and yeah. move forward? Can't we have the event just for the Christmas tree? Does it have to be the entire city lights? 
Well, we I, can, I mean, we... I would move. I would move the resolution on it, and we'll continue to work forward to make sure that yeah. all of it happens. Maybe all of will flow, throw on is all of Washington. Right. If, that's yeah, maybe just the swags are on yeah. Washington, or maybe it'll yeah. just be rather than all of downtown. But anyway, so I wouldn't stop. Yeah. I just wanted to let you know where it stood. She's got some nice, <coughs> uh, nice ideas. Some entertainment. Um, that was my next question. What what consistent of the event? Uh, part of the Prism Choir, which is a hundred member choir, not the entire choir. She's got like twenty members of that. I know she's talked to uh, the church about some choir members there. She's got a. Uh, I think she has a sponsor for free hot chocolate, um, and some of the other things that are listed. Oh, she wants to do a projection on the Baldwin or on the uh, alley. The fifth. Um, Thing, some of the things that we were trying to do last year. It'll be a nice little event. It's not going to be, you know, it'll be a nice little shopping thing, I think. It'll start a nice tradition in downtown. Do we do this shit? I don't think we do. we do a motion on this? Yeah, I think so. Not yet. Yeah, yeah, we resolution. do a motion. Yeah, you, so thank I'll you. move the resolution. <laughs> All right. Director Krieger, do I have a second? I'll second that. Second by Director London. Any discussion? Seeing another call for this vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> okay. Media buying. Sean. <clears throat> At uh, the recent uh, Consumer Marketing Committee, uh, they recommended. Um, Establishing a budget for $90,000 for the uh, procurement of, of uh, media inventory for the uh, all of the audio and, and uh, video commercials um, once they're completed. So you'll notice on this uh, we left a couple blank spots because uh, the committee is not recommending any one firm uh, in particular at this point. They're still looking for uh, for somebody to uh, to implement that, uh, but what they do have uh, figured out is uh, it's the estimated budget of what they would need to do that, and this also includes um, whatever percentage uh, that agent would charge for uh, for the services of media buying. Um, so at this point, the uh, factory Detroit is has just finished filming. Uh, six television commercials, and they will have an additional four radio commercials. Um, but those six television television commercials can also be used as audio or radio commercials as well. So we're actually looking more at like ten radio and six television that need to be placed. Um, so that is a, a total of sixteen ads to be placed. Uh, you know, for the remainder of the season. Uh, which can be quite a task. So uh, the Consumer uh, Marketing Committee is recommending that we, we look for somebody who has a lot of experience doing that so they can place them where they would be most effective. Could you just explain our last, your last sentence, <coughs> if you don't mind? Sure. Do, there's, a, there's a time frame here or something? This is for a whole calendar year. I think that's, that's, that was what I was trying to not just the, figure out here. It's right. Four years budget, not just... I thought you said there was a deadline or a time frame of her, something to hurry to get out or something. <clears throat> well, the the commercials will be finished in October. Okay. So we can, if we have somebody lined up uh, who's hired to do this, they can start oh, getting so you, to work. Oh, so in order to kick it off. Implementing them in October. A hurry to kick it off. Right. But going back to what you said, Laurie, then these 10 or whatever number we're arriving at, uh, and this a dollar amount is based on from October to October of next year, something similar to that. Is that? I don't think we've established really a calendar. We didn't of implementation establish yet. a calendar. But it's not just. So quarter. when are the ads going to run? Right. I mean, when are the ads going to run? They're going to start running um, in mid October. Um, and this, it, it's kind of. I'm going to backtrack to explain why there's a need for this person. Uh, if you looked at the scripts of the commercials, each commercial addresses a, a mood or um, a day in Royal Oak, whether it's family or uh, a restaurant or shopping or, or whatever. And in an effort to get those 
specific scripts in the media or, or the market that it's going to speak to the audience that it's intended to speak to, we need someone to work with, whether it's a radio station or a television station or social media or Spotify or whatever, to get it placed in the time that it's supposed to, it's supposed to be. Does that make sense? Yeah. So also hiring a media buyer will also allow us to get discounted rates on spots on Channel 7, Channel 4, Channel 2, whatever. So just, just, so, just, so, just so I understand. So, <coughs> Tim, because this is before us, none of this is in our budget. That's correct. Okay. So we have 4000 to create the ads, 8000 separate from this for the tree lighting. This is, is it 90000 for the, the ads themselves? It's 90000 to get the, the ads onto the billboards, onto the TV screens. It's... it's to buy... <laughs> uh, just, just so I understand, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to clarify. 90000 is the cost of the space. Correct. Yes. And now, in addition to that, we need somebody to place the buy. No. Is that that's, 90, included, that's included in the that's 90? A, that's included in the 90. Okay, but, but again... Um, this, just, just, just out of curiosity, we put together a marketing budget, didn't we? And I understand if, if this is outside of that, but do, just so I understand the percentages of where we're at, does anybody remember or do we have access to what was our original marketing uh, budget for all this stuff? I think the production budget was 75000 75. was for Factory Detroit to do the spots and, and those things. And and they've done that. The four thousand you just blessed were more in addition to that. Okay. This is to actually get them out there. All they've done to date is production. <laughs> Wait a second. So there was seventy five thousand in the budget for first Detroit. Is that correct? Factory, Factory. Factory Detroit. I'm sorry. <coughs> to do production. Production only. Just to make them. It isn't to get them on radio by the radio time. But it's only costing us four thousand to make them. I'm confused. No, that, that's the additional holiday. Ads. I'm sorry, for another four. So it's seventy nine. It'll call it eighty thousand. So we had the seventy five in the budget, and that's creating. But this. so so we had we had we had, we, had, we just out of curiosity. I'm sorry. That's well, okay. So we budgeted seventy five to create ads, but we didn't put anything in there to put for, to, to yeah. place. That's exactly That right. is correct. Why would we have done that? We, were, we waited till we had the experts tell us what, what it is. But why wanted. didn't we just have a holder in there or something like that? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm just wondering. This is on all of us. I'm not pointing any fingers. 1920, 19, 2019, 2020, we'll definitely do that. Right. I understand. I, but I'm just wondering. Yeah. So, so, so we, okay. Yeah. All right. So, so we did... Budget. So obviously we had the intention of placing the ads. Yes. We just didn't place it for it. Right. And we do have room in the budget to add for this. Certainly. Okay. I understand that. And it doesn't I, I just here's my only request. Enough is this that, that going into next year, uh, so next June when we get or start next February when we start budgeting, that we, we put this all together and we had a comprehensive yeah. you know marketing budget. And that but, doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that we're going to use all ninety thousand, although if it's there we probably will, but um, it's so, but 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 the nine thousand that also includes the placement of that. The, per, the placement and the person or persons. Okay. The fees, well, the now that we're there, now to, to throw something out there, I need you all to put on your thinking hats. And this comes back to something that we went through at the business marketing committee, where one of the things that, that we we were trying, and I, and I hate to mix metaphors here, but this is important when it comes to this. One of the things that we're trying to do is to um, come up with um, our own PR guy for the DDA, for numerous reasons. And I don't know whether we need to get into them here. And with this position that's going to be filled here, um, we need some communication. Or, and I'm not asking for that now. But in looking for this, one of the concerns and the reason that we held off on one of the uh, persons that we interviewed was we didn't know what, what, what this buyer was going to do and what he was going to be able to accomplish, what other goodies he was going to get, so to put, um, by by placing these ads with different media outlets. Does, did, I, did I explain that well, Tim? Does that make sense? And what yeah, the, and I think there is an overlap, and I right. think there still is an overlap in the, in the sense of getting out good media, getting added airtime on a on a cook show or whatever, whatever 
whatever it was. And yes, that's part of this. I think the committee, this, the Consumer Marketing Committee is really looking at going in uh, one of two directions, uh, either using somebody that's working through Factory Detroit or somebody that's working with the 360 event. That would keep kind of contracts right. concise sure. and not add a third party to the event the event wheel with 360 or the the ad PR wheel with Factory Detroit. So so, so in terms that's of that's really I think the two options that are out here waiting to okay. waiting to get finalized from the committee. So to kind of wrap this up. In order to meet the deadline that I think the committee wants to get with Factory Detroit's deadline to have the production ready to then put on, put out there, um, I would ask that possibly if you're open to it is that uh, you approve these uh, and leave it to the committee to select one of those two um, proposals when they arrive. Uh, within this budget. They've had some preliminary numbers. If you're not uh, open to that, which I totally understand, but then this isn't going to get dealt with until October's meeting. So that's kind of the rush if I wanted right. to explain it for the committee. If, if that's the case, then these won't hit the airwaves, they won't hit the social media, they won't get out there until later. Um, so... That's Perfect. The rush. We, we, the Consumer Marketing Committee, is mindful of the two objectives, the media placement and the PR, and uh, in discussions, the, the potential overlap, it, we're mindful of that. Will the media placement person be able to fulfill the role of PR? Not sure yet. Right. We have to talk to the people and, and, and see. Just, and, so that's out, and, just so that's out there, and, and, and it's something... And, 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 I, and I, I agree, but just, just so that we understand that, and, and, and I agree with, with uh, Tim that we don't, you know, we don't, we, we don't need to overlap where, where we don't need to. And this will also, once we know whom this person is and what they're going to do, that will allow us to find the right person and to make sure that they do the right thing or whether that person's even needed. Would you agree, Sean? I would agree. Yeah. I mean, I in mean, in terms of you and I both agree that that person, to a degree, is needed. Well, there are a lot of different functions that I see various committees wanting to fulfill. So I think if if there's there's one agency or one firm that can fulfill multiple ones, I I think that has the potential of being more efficient and may reduce any potential for you know, crosstalk, cross communication, yeah. things yeah. like that. So that's Correct. that's one thing that, that <clears throat> I'm concerned about. So I would agree with, with Mr. Twing that the selection of the media placement person, the consumer marketing committee could handle that because we can do it on a more expedited basis. And but the the conversation regarding a PR specialist, we can continue that. Uh, either at the board or business marketing to see I I and when we know who the media placement person is in the next week or so then we can determine whether we need an additional person for the PR well, obviously, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I agree that we, we yeah that, that one once we know who the person is and exactly what what their function will be I got it so I'll, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the recommendation of the consumer marketing committee to budget 90,000 for media buying and to allow the Consumer Marketing Committee to select uh, that, that person to do the media buying. I have a motion by Director Yesbeck. Second. A second by Director Bagley. All. Quick, quick question. Is, 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 are, are we, the person that will be selected by you guys is between these two? Is that, is that fair? Actually, there's several. Well, see, that's, that's a whole different ball. That's a whole different kind of fish. My understanding is there's... Uh, the person recommended by Factory Detroit, and then Julie from 360 recommended somebody. We'd like to talk to them too. We'd like to just get uh, a little bit better flavor of, of what these folks offer, and and so and then Julie herself offered to do that kind of work. There's, so to me, there's three people. There's more than that. 
Anybody else? Sean, I, I, there's three people that I know of, right? The uh, Factory Detroit recommendation, Julie's recommendation, and Julie herself. Yes, there was uh, an uh, indiv I'm also counting an individual that, oh, uh, yeah, we go that attended way. the most recent business marketing committee too. Spoke with the uh, business marketing committee. Yeah, for Lee. media placement? Um, no. No, we're just, just talking for, media placement right now. No, I, I'm talking about in terms of, yeah, just for media placement. Those three. Correct. Director Riley, those three for media placement. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion on that other one? No. Any other discussion? No. no. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those motion carries. Number 14, discussion brick paper replacement South Means. Um, I'll bring this up from a discussion standpoint and put it out there. Many, many of you may be aware that the old, uh, the, the older streetscapes that have the uh, concrete pavers <coughs> on several areas of town have uh, popped. They're not even. They're not. Uh, they're not good shape. Um, we're, the city's no longer really replacing those. They're they're simply uh, coal patching them. Uh, so my ask is, is, does the DDA have any interest in having uh, staff, uh, myself and the engineering department, do an evaluation on to where all those areas are and come back with a recommendation of where to replace those with the stamped colored concrete and a potential cost uh, to do so? If, uh, we don't want to spend the time on it if you're not interested in potentially funding it. I'm not asking to set a dollar amount, but um, I know there are areas on South Main that are, are in trouble and, and have issues. I know there are some downtown uh, that we need to look at. So uh, in a holistic fashion, we could break it out by areas and you could do it piecemeal, but at least to give you some sort of indication. But um, I would, there might be some initial uh, cost to, to do some of the work, but I think it'd be pretty minimal. Um, uh, so it's really that was my overview was do you want us to spend time on this, potentially running it through the infrastructure committee, bringing it back with a recommendation, and, and then potentially start scheduling. And, and I'm not talking replacing regular concrete. No. The thought would be taken out to... The Concrete current pavers. The current pavers and replacing them with the stamp. With the stamp. And, and we could do it in an area basis, spread it out over time, or, or we, could, we, could, we could do certain areas. We could figure out the hardest hit right. and start with those. And, yep, I'm all for it. I think it's worth the effort to, to take a look at this. I think uh, I know they'll have, to, they'll have to spend some time on it, but I think um, Mr. Twain's idea about taking a look at it and sending it First the infrastructure, and then we can maybe vet it out a little bit, and then um, bring something to the table. Yeah. I agree. The chair of the infrastructure committee. Everybody, everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Number 15, downtown Belay operation. Um, well, this was a follow-up to, to the last meeting where we had the uh, 202 East Third Street Valet request. There was a second part of the uh, infrastructure committee's recommend recommendation regarding valet operations that uh, was never addressed at the prior meeting. So I put it back here uh, just to clarify whether the DDA had any interest in studying a citywide valet service in the downtown and asking the city commission to support that effort or whether this was not something you were interested in. I just needed direction. I, I think it didn't get resolved last month. Clarification. When you say studying, you're talking about bringing somebody in to do a... I know. I think, I think, we think initially what I would think of, we, we would, through the infrastructure committee, invite current valley operators, invite someone from the police department in to see how it's operating, maybe talk with the... Uh, Park right about how it could be located. How could we position valet service better to get bigger bang for the buck? And should the city just contract with a sole provider, or, or how should we do it? Um, I know there's independent <coughs> individual efforts to run valet, but it's spotty and sporadic. And could we look at it? I'm not talking about bringing somebody in at this point, but. Uh, 
just something we try to do internal and evaluate. Would this be something that would probably be pushed, kicked back to us then? From the well, city we'd, if, if the city commission's on board, if they want to have someone involved, a commissioner be involved, they could participate. But I, my thought would be we'd run it through the infrastructure committee because that's where all your parking issues run through. Uh, and we'd, we'd invite the various staff members, and at some point, the uh, various valet operators that are downtown right now as well. I don't know, maybe somebody from the restaurant association, or whoever, to get input on how they think that the valet service could run better. So or every, everybody recall that we tried to do this about 10 years ago? Yep, yep. that's all right. That. And we got the <laughs> blank kicked out of us by the restaurant owners. <laughs> I think. Um, I think Mr. Train explained it well, but just to take it another step further, I think initially the way this, this discussion started was not necessarily that we were looking at, that, at this big, huge citywide project like they're talking about with bus stops and transit stops and everything else. We were, I think what happened was is that we, we, we thought that um, the application that we put forth at third and... Uh, by Lockhart's there was was good and was going to be good for the city and good for helpful in that area. And I think the initial discussion of this was, are there any other areas in the city that would benefit from valet operations? And is there any other locations that are suited for valet operations? So I think that's how this discussion started. Um, I like the idea that Mr. Twing has about bringing in, you know, the police department and, and some other stakeholders and, and and um, getting input from them and just seeing if we could come up with something. Um, I don't know how extensive it has to be or should be, and it maybe it, maybe it is only adding a couple additional locations, um, but we, we've got some new development going on. We've got some new things going on. I think it's something that with the parking situations and everything else, I think it's something that people would take advantage of. Sounds like a semi-motion. Oh, she has her hand up. Go ahead. Well, it's a separate conversation, but similar. And it nice be, would be nice to have an Uber and Lyft stop, too. These Uber drivers stop in the middle of the block, in the middle of the street, to drop someone off. It'd be nice if there was a designated area where they could be dropped off and picked off safely instead of random spots in the middle. Can you legislate that? I don't know if you can watch this, but they, they are, some cities have Uber stops for, yeah. I, I can provide the, some the, insight the, on that. They have that's what I'd say. So we, uh, when we were working with Lyft. That's a, that's a different story when, when we had the, 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 the promo. But if, if well, you're they, bring like if, if anybody takes a Lyft in, can you say you have to be dropped off? You don't have to be, but you, you have a You can area. set up Make drop off zones. You can set up drop-off zones and, and actually the lift oh, comes like out the and, and sets like the up signs too, and everything. Yeah. The challenge in the downtown was is we would actually have to take away parking. Yeah. We couldn't find a spot where that would logistically work well without getting rid of on-street parking spaces. Right. So that, that was the issue we ran into. Maybe it could be tied in with the bus stop. Well, I, I, Lori, what I was going to say is the first thing I thought of the whole bus thing is <laughs> stopping buses in downtown. I don't want to go there. And to back to the um, valet. valet thing, I, I, I'd be, I'm kind of curious what the negatives would be um, of, of what they were 10 years ago. But for the me... Rest, the restaurants all wanted to control their valets. They didn't want an independent valet service. Well, but, uh, Two but, restaurant areas here. Yeah. But, but, I, but I could see a complaint being is like, why does he get in front of his well, place? I, I, in front I of mean, mine, I, did, I, I didn't get to finish my point. My, my point is I, I view it as an extra added layer of convenience and value. Sure. A lot of my customers are handicapped um, and need assistance coming into my building. And I, if I had, if there were valley parking nearby, I know that it would be well received. Um, they have to be dropped off all the time, and then the cars have to go around the block. And, you know, it just, I see it as, I don't see it as a negative, so I, I think we should move forward with it. Well, there is a suggested resolution here. Probably. Make a motion to uh, move the resolution as stated. So moved by Director Baglio. I'll second it. Seconded by Director London. Any discussion? Seeing none, a call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. We're going to 
are we on committee? <laughs> we just had three committee meetings. Yeah. Um, <laughs> consumer marketing, is there anything you want to add to what we've already discussed today? Everything that Sean said. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it was Thank a very you, busy Sean. month. Yeah. We now know what your favorite committee is. Uh, infrastructure committee. We dealt with the facade application. Um, there really was not much else on the agenda for that. Okay. And Matt? Yep. Um, we met twice on the 29th. Uh, we met with uh, the guys from 218 South Main, Mrs. Mrs. Simchina and gang. Uh, brought them back on the 12th and met with them as well as um, 220 South Main. Um, and we also on the um, 12th met with a potential uh, PR candidate uh, for the DDA who whose suggestion and who's offering us a, an opportunity to try him out, so to speak, with a monthly uh, stipend uh, for one, two, three months, whatever we decide. And we've kind of tabled that until um, the consumer marketing gets through with, with, with uh, finding their ad placer, so to speak, and what, and what they're going to do. And then we'll communicate with one another, and see how much overlap there is, and if, in fact, this position is needed, what we can do. And again, I think everybody understands just what we're looking for with this PR person. Um, all the stuff that's going on, there's a lot of negative stuff flying around about Royal Oak and why people are leaving town and very little about who's coming into town and stuff like that. And it's stuff that is message that's sort of outside of our control and we're looking for somebody who can get our message out there and not necessarily control the narrative, but at least not really fight fire with fire, but get a positive message out there beyond beyond what beyond the advertising that we're doing. You know, stuff like when 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 we when we do something well, whether it's the lift promo or somebody new coming into town or something like that, getting that word out, or even promoting what's already here. Sure, exactly, exactly, and that's. And um, Sean will fill you guys in on the discussions that we've had at your committee meeting. Is that fair? Yeah, well, absolutely. Good. Okay, anybody else with anything regarding committees? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Sean, let's let Sean read through his entire report. <laughs> if, you, if you have any questions, we'll come back to those. We'll come it back. Sounds like a great idea, but can we adjourn first? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, our adjourner left already. Jason. This so. is just practice for graduate school. Yeah. I was going to say, half, half, half of this is probably already covered anyway, but go ahead. Go ahead. Um, okay, and I, will, I will move at a, at a reasonable pace here. Um, Main Street update. Uh, since the uh, board approved the Genesis Credit Union uh, grant, or at least participating in that program, um, I've been... Uh, Spreading the word on that, I have a couple business owners who've expressed interest. So uh, they even uh, one even called me yesterday saying that they're going to be at our stakeholders meeting tomorrow at ten uh, at five fifteen um, to get uh, to get an application because because they have something really specific in mind. So I'll be sure to take it to the uh, to the committee. Um, Main Street technical assistance. When I wrote this, I hadn't received word on it. So in my report, it says it's still <coughs> pending. I actually just now received word from uh, from Oakland County that the technical assistance uh, has been approved. And just to remind the board, uh, DDA applied for technical assistance through the annual uh, technical assistance program for Main Street, Oakland County, uh, to fund the uh, the alley master plan from 3rd to 6th Streets uh, that Fleiss and Vandenbrink were doing. Um, Veterans Memorial Grant, we already covered that. Um, retail recruitment assistance, I'm also working with uh, some staff people at Main Street Oakland County to put together some property information packets. Uh, we received some retail recruitment support through them by virtue of being a member. Uh, so I've been sending them some in, uh, information from the brokers, such as floor plans for some of the vacant commercial spaces we have. Um, uh, some photos that they have of the interior space and they are putting together kind of brief two-page uh, information packets that they use to whenever they go to uh, economic development functions uh, they can they can market our commercial properties along with some others throughout the county too. Um, spotlight program we're entering the 14th week of the spotlight program uh, it's going very well um, 
the uh, engagement on our social media is is trending way up because of it. It's giving us a lot of original content. Um, found that a, a really good tactic to use with social media is instead of just advertising a lot of our businesses, but to actually communicate stories about our business owners. When I do that, I find a lot more people tend to engage with our pages. You know, they click on our page, they follow it to our website. Um, it just seems a lot more genuine when it's presented that way. So I, I find uh, I'm meeting a lot of, of success with that. Um, the Lyft promo code um, expired September 1st. Uh, in the future, if we did something like this, I think maybe we should, if we're going to have it go through an event, should probably have it go through the entire event rather than terminate halfway through the event. It ended sep Saturday, September 1st. So anybody trying to use it to come down on Sunday or Monday wasn't available to them. Uh, one interesting thing I did, did find, I put a graph in my report, was that right before the promotion expired on the 1st, the usage of the code spiked uh, almost double what the regular usage was in previous weeks. So I think there was just a sense of urgency of people wanting to apply the code before they weren't able to anymore. So in the future, I'd also maybe like to have certain codes have uh, be valid for shorter periods of time, just so interest doesn't wane and then we see that kind of lull in the middle of, of uh, that six week period of time. Um, Parking signage evaluation. I've been getting some numbers from Parkright. I'm still waiting on some more detailed numbers, but from some of the, the overviews that they sent me, and I've included that in my report, is that uh, as we went into the summer, the usage in the parking stru structures actually decreased for a little bit, uh, such as when we went into... June and July, it looks like the numbers decreased, except for the Center Street deck, which consistently, or almost consistently, increased. So we see in April the number was 32,000 entries for that month in the Center Street deck. In August, it was 40. So I'm still waiting for some more detailed information from Parkwright because I'd like to see the daily usage, because I'd like to see what the usage was before those signs went up and the banners went up and what it was after that to see if there was an actual effect that it had. Um, well, yeah, you obviously got a big jump in Center Street because yeah, of the lots closing here. Right. So there's definitely a jump here. Um, but I'd, I'd like to get some more specifics, and I'll include that in my report the next month. I'm just waiting on, on some information from Park Right. Uh, Small Business Saturday. Uh, I believe we discussed that. Um, Earlier uh, in the spring, the first um, some board members, the city manager and myself, talked about uh, putting together some kind of welcome event for the Atkin building. And I'm moving forward with that. I've worked with, I have about a dozen restaurants that have signed on to do a kind of a, we're calling it a restaurant rally in the main parking garage of the Atkin building on their ground floor. Um, the staff will be invited to come down between 11 and 1 on September 25th. They'll be able to sample a lot of the things that the restaurants and cafes have to offer. Um, the intention here is to uh, introduce a lot of new faces who are working in our downtown to a lot of the businesses. You know, they, they're, they're coming in from Southfield or Auburn Hills or wherever those businesses previously were, and we'd like them to help them form new habits, getting their coffee in downtown, going up to lunch in downtown, uh, meeting with coworkers after work downtown. So we really want to expose them to a lot of what we have to offer. Um, in conjunction with that, I'm putting together uh, a downtown welcome guide that will be in PDF form that I can send over to them. I've been working with a staff member at Atken who is going to uh, send this out via email to every staff person in the building the morning of the welcome event. So they'll have this guide they'll be able to peruse through that day and then from 11 to 1, they'll have the uh, the restaurant rally where they can sample a lot of the, the fare that downtown has to offer. Quick question. So, so somebody somebody in the building has, is going to have the ability to have everybody's email address? Yeah, she already does. She's she's a staff person. So In the she, whole building? Yeah. Yep, she's been my contact that I've been so, working with. I don't know. That sounds good. So, so, so if I'm one of the workers going in there, wow, interesting. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And we have access to that list? 
No, I don't have that. She won't give me that list. <laughs> <laughs> Just wondering. Okay. <clears throat> More people show up to the stakeholder meetings. Um, uh, I had a request from Hyatt that uh, we put together some sort of visitor map. Their exact request was when they have people come in, guests staying at the hotel, they don't want to go on a website or anything. They want something that can be handed to them. Perfect. That's like one page that they can look at really quickly. Um, I did offer our website and all the information it has to offer, but they uh, they prefer something physical. So I was going to see if I could maybe get something drawn up or written up, and uh, I can take it down to the print shop at City Hall here and see about having something available to them that they could pass out. So I think that should be professionally. That's very, very yeah. good to... I like to see that you can kick back to the consumer marketing committee. I, I go to a hotel, you give them maps yeah. all the time, and they're... With the little numbers on it? Yeah. Like, it'll be Most like... Fun. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Co- yeah, that's... It should be, I that. think it should be a professional graphic designer. All right. I will take that to the, uh, the next CMC committee, and then... Lori, uh, what you're thinking of is something like where... You know, bars and restaurants are one color. Retail shops right. are another color. If points of interest are another color. Yeah. And numbered, yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, in addition to that, I am working with our uh, geographic information too. systems person who in idea. City Hall who's going to be putting together, actually currently working on creating maps, uh, interactive maps that we'll be able to put on the website that actually display that information electronically too. So he does really good work too. He put together the uh, the parking guide that's currently on the website. Do, do just a question, consumer market. Do we have anybody in any of these forms or any of these groups because you guys have been dealing with them, that might be able to handle that as an aside? In terms of graphics? Yeah, yeah. Somebody like Factory Detroit. I, I'm not sure what they all do. <laughs> I used to do it for the retailers, but yeah. I'll okay. Out. I don't know if anybody. Just out of, out of curiosity, who does it for the? Um, it's just to somebody who does it. Who does it for the um, beer stroll or the wine stroll? Do we know who does that? I don't know who they work with. I mean, I okay. I know dozens of okay. professional graphic designers cool. we could potentially bring to a committee meeting. Um, and then advertising update. Uh, I think I covered a lot of that in the uh, the previous resolutions. Um, I spoke to Mark Lance from Factory Detroit today. Uh, he said the filming just wrapped up yesterday. He said it went very well. They didn't run into any problems whatsoever. So that was uh, that was really good to hear. So the filming is completed. Um, he'd like to meet with the Consumer Marketing Committee this Friday, uh, I believe in the morning, uh, where he's, he can go over what's been filmed, he can go over the rough cuts, that's before the, the color correction and everything too, so they're not completely finished, but just uh, kind of a progress update. Um, so in, in addition to that, he's got all the radio completed as well. So that, that's moving along very well, and, and according to schedule, he hasn't run into any issues. I uh, stopped into Toyology when they were filming for a few minutes just to check in with them, and it was, it was really cool to watch. Um, and that is, uh, that concludes my report. Anybody have any questions? I have a couple questions. The packets that you're creating for, how long um, is the Main Street creating those, or are you creating those? And the property information packets? Correct. Main Street's creating those. Do you have any idea when they'll be done? No, I'm not sure yet. Okay. Um, and the graph that you showed for Lyft, um, it was art, did Arts, Beats, and Eats mm-hmm. reflected that last spike? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did mention that uh, indicated that the there was a greater sense of urgency, and then another contributing factor was Arts, Beats, and Eats. Um, what should be noted, though, is that on the 31st, um, which was also the day of Arts, Beats, and Eats, mm-hmm. it was only like a third mm-hmm. of what September 1st was. So I also, I, I also, and then right after that, it dropped right back down. So I, I think the, uh, the promotion ending, I, I think, was definitely a contributing factor as well. But yes, Arts, Beats, and Eats was certainly a uh, factor, and I, I included that in my report. Okay. That's all I got. The only thing I'll say about the map, to me, it makes a lot more sense to have a map that's a PDF that the hotel can download and print because then it can be kept up to date. Rather than spending it. a bunch that's of money in printing or t- time in printing. That's, that's a good call. So, anyhow. Or that we have and we print off and take to them. Yeah. Yeah. 
but make it a bad. That's that's a good call. All right, anybody with anything else? Just two things real quick. The alley north of Second <coughs> Street to Eleven Mile Road, uh, we got to bid back. Uh, we're having a meeting tomorrow with the neighbors to tell them about the schedule and the, the timing to do it. Uh, the added cost is going to be about sixty-nine thousand dollars, and it's just going to get covered by the contingency of the parking deck at this point. Uh, so it's not going to come back to the DDA for any action at, at this point. Um, the other item that's out there was the wayfinding uh, towers. Uh, we had a meeting the other day with uh, the supplier uh, so we could get the specs and hopefully get that together soon. So. Does the 69000 include the, the tearing up too? Well, the, the original, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, that's the added amount. That was the added amount onto what was already planned. And, and we're not replacing the sidewalk. Right. So there was sidewalk uh, replaced all along from south of second, but yep. we're not replacing it north of second. So. Right. Anyway, moving forward. Okay. Anybody? Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Director Esbitt. Second. Supported by Director Riley. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.